from Centennial Ice Arena, we are live for this annual Thanksgiving tradition. Glenbrook North, Glenbrook South, a part of the high school rivalry series presented by the Chicago Blackhawks. Good evening, everybody, and welcome into tonight's broadcast, much anticipated between number two, Glenbrook North, and number four, Glenbrook South. I'm joined in the booth with Wes Anderson, Andrew Rubin. I am Max Anderson, and along with our all-star technical crew, Jenna Rose down on the ice, Dylan Ward will do ice reporting for us as well. We will have all of the live game action for you here from Centennial. Boys, it was packed in here about a half hour ago. Energy's only building as we move along. It's gonna be a heck of a game on the ice. Max, you said it Wednesday night before Thanksgiving, a tradition as long as time, GBN versus GBS, and the matchup of the regular season. Couldn't get more excited to be here, and the fans are showing that as well. Yeah, we love the hate week between these two schools, Andrew, and as you said, it's just boiling over. Both teams are ready to go locked in, and we're going to get puck drop here in a second, but you can just feel the energy intensify in this building as we go along. So obviously this game always comes with a lot of pomp and circumstance, but two critical points on the line here tonight for three, excuse me, three critical points on the line here tonight for these two teams. Tighten the standings. GBN playing their best hockey of the season so far. GBS coming off a bit of a rough loss. A lot at stake here tonight. Yeah, GBS of course having that rough loss against Loyola. GBN coming off of a win against Forest Hills and York as well in overtime, both teams. But you can throw all that out in a game like this with the magnitude and the atmosphere like this. So with that said, we're going to turn over to public address announcer Stephen Bain. First this evening, the Glenbrook South Titan Hockey Club would like to welcome all GPS faculty and staff in attendance this evening. And now, the lineup for the visiting Glenbrook North Spartans Hockey Club. How dope is this?
number 26, Adam Sokol. Our senior forward, number 27, Nicholas Ventura. Our junior forward, number 29, Benji Pajerski. Our senior goaltender, number 31,
Welcome back to the broadcast. Wes Anderson, Andrew Rubin, Max Anderson up here at the broadcast level. Dylan Ward, Jenna Rose down around rink level. Jenna will have all the interviews tonight. Dylan, all the ringside analysis. We have a full crew. We've got Joel Schneider on one camera, Matt Freeman on another. We've got Gerard Voris from GBS uh, Digital Network. I, don't, I think that's what they call it these days. <laughs> He's down on the ice. He's bringing you that first time we've ever been able to do an ice camera like that. We're pulling out all the stops. GBN, GBS. Thanksgiving Eve, that's what we do it for. Wouldn't expect anything less with the North-South game here as we get started for warm-ups here just a bit. So we start to look in on this game, and one thing that sticks out, guys, from this year's teams, GBN, GBS, compared to last, and really for many years past, GBN, usually a high-flying, lots of scoring, really effective in the offensive zone, maybe give up a few goals, but they'll make up for it on the offensive end. GBS, historically the opposite, led by Luke Winger the last couple of seasons, were maybe the best defensive team in the state the last couple of years. Those identities have flipped. GBS, high-flying offense, five and a half goals a game. GBN, led by Michael Raderman and net, and a great defensive core. It's a change of identities for these two teams. Oh, Max, 100%. Well, let's lead off with GBS here. You got Zach Freemuth, second leading scorer in all of the SHL, over 20 points in under 12 games. He really spearheads this offense. Wes, you talked about Zach Freemuth. You can't say enough about him. I'm going to highlight Michael Raderman for Glenbrook North, a 921 save percentage, a 1.75 goals against average. Truly incredible numbers. And with that, we're going to send it down to ice level now where Jenna Rose is standing by with GBS head coach Jim Philbin. And as I say that, Jim Philbin signed the scorecard, so we'll buy just a moment here. And I get the signal all set. Jenna, take it away. We are now joined by Illinois Hockey Hall of Famer and head coach of Glenbrook South, Jim Philbin. Coach, you know better than anybody the anticipation for this matchup. You take a look around. What will it take for Glenbrook South to play true to their identity tonight? Well, I think we just got to stick to our game plan. You know, play for each other. We're not out here to play for fans. It's just another game in a season. It's two points in the standings, and that's our focus tonight. We'd be remiss if we didn't talk about senior captain Zach Freemuth. Not only is he leading the team in 14 goals, but also leading the entire Scholastic Hockey League in points. How critical is he to tonight's plan? Uh, he's a very important piece to our puzzle, obviously. He's been a four-year varsity hockey player. He's been an outstanding captain on and off the ice, tremendous leader. You know, he keeps things simple. He plays for his teammates and with his teammates. And, you know, he's one of the best leaders that we've had here at Glenbrook South. Well, that mentality, that mentality can be infectious. You're looking around the team now, 11 power play goals so far on the season. What has allowed you to be successful with the man advantage? Well, I think moving pucks, you know, we're more creative than we were last year on the power play and, and adapting and, and seeing what other teams are doing and countering that and uh, finding the two-on-ones where we can and traffic in front. But puck movement's the key on a power play. Well, uh, Coach, we're eager to watch tonight's game. Thank you so much for your time. Absolutely. Thank you. All right. Sending it back up to the booth. Thank you, Jenna. And where Jenna finished there is where I want to pick it back up. And year after year, Wes, I've been doing this eight years. You've been doing this about three or four. We talk about GBN being the best power play in the league every single year. Well, there's a new top power play in the league, and it's GBS, and that's something new as well. Yeah, Max clicking at over 30%, 11 for 31 on the power play there as Jenna mentioned and talking to Coach Philbin, it really gives another dy dynamic to this team. You talk about it, usually more defensive with Lucas Winger and Neck. It's completely flip-flop, and it's spearheaded again by their captain and Zach Freeman. Also, one thing to highlight for this game, number one and number two power play in the SHL. We mentioned GBN perennially at the top. They are number two. Both these teams also struggling a little bit on the penalty kill, sitting around 80%, mid-70s on the penalty kill. Both coaches have to have the message of stay out of the box in this game One tonight. thing we always talk about in this game is that first couple of shifts, right? You've got light legs, you're flying around. You don't want to take any dumb penalties, especially early. You know the way momentum can be set in this game, Andrew. You played in this game a couple of times. You know that if you get started early, and give up a, a couple of power play opportunities and maybe a couple power play goals, it could be extremely hard to come back in this environment. You're right on there, Max. From past experience, the most difficult shift of the game is that first shift. How can you get in the feeling of this game? You got an arena that's been maxed out to capacity. They're denying people at the door, something that most of these kids haven't played in before. How can you get yourself to make it feel like a regular hockey game? Like the coaches mentioned, two points. And Andrew, you've played in this in years past, as Max just mentioned. The coaches like to make this the first game these two play against each other in a given season. I remember you mentioned you guys played one another in the preseason invitational tournament. 
but normally this is the first time these two teams are seeing each other. It's that build of anticipation, that build of hype that comes in for this game. That can be a gift, it can be a curse like we've talked about. Yeah, man, you just have to learn how to control that energy. You a great point. That first shift is just can you settle down, take a deep breath. Coach Philman alluded to it. Again, it's just two points at stake. We know that the energy, the energy in this building is packed. There's a max capacity crowd, but the first team that can just take a deep breath, settle in, and get to their game first is going to be the winner tonight. Always huge, that first shift, those first five minutes of the game really set the tone for the whole first period. Then as the game goes on, you will see teams get back to their normal selves. So those first five minutes where one team can really jump out to a quick advantage. Wes, we talked briefly a minute ago about Michael Raiderman. I want to come back to Raiderman because really the story so far of the SHL has been Loyola Gold and Charlie Trapp, who me and you have seen a couple of times. I know you've been tremendously impressed as our resident hockey expert here on the SHL Network. I've been blown away. Michael Raiderman right on his heels, not getting the talk and the hype of the freshman, but he's been as effective as Trapp so far this year. Max, and just looking at his stats, so 175 goals against and north of a 9-2 save percentage is is just incredible and playing all 16 games for these Spartans. He's really the catalyst of that that defense back there. And as you talk about Charlie Trapp and Loyola, he might have all the hype, but Raiderman tonight on the big stage is going to have something to say about that. The last thing I wanted to talk about is the battle behind the bench. You have two legendary coaches in Illinois hockey. Obviously, Jimmy Philbin already enshrined in the Illinois Hockey Hall of Fame. I have a feeling Evan Polakitis is not going to be very far behind him here shortly. Polakitis just got his 550th career win. The battle behind the benches is one to watch tonight as well. Absolutely something to highlight. These coaches know each other. They've been coaching against them for so long. I've had the ability to get to know them personally very well. Two of the most mastermind hockey minds you will see in the, not only the entire state of Illinois, in all of the hockey world. Yeah, not to mention we can look down there at Evan Polakitis on the bench. Got a snazzy green blazer. You know he's locked in and... Just on, on the other side for the Titans, and, and Jimmy Philbin likes to keep it a little bit more casual, which is just kind of the yin and yang as you expect from these two teams. But, yeah, it's as good of a game as on the ice as two great coaches behind the benches as well. The key here, obviously a neutral site at Centennial, but technically GBS the home team, so it will be Jimmy Philbin that gets last change. I know one of the things he's going to look for is to get Freemuth away from that top defensive pairing of GBN. We saw the way Will Steele and Matt Klein were really able to slow down Freemuth, Hoffer, and Ventura last game. He's going to try to get that line away from GBN's top defensive pair. I think something else to highlight, Max, GBN has a great top defensive pair, but as you mentioned, GBN so much better defensively. They have great depth, even losing senior captain Jacob Smith, who's out due to injury. GBN still has so much depth defensively. I feel like they are comfortable in almost any matchup they can get with Freemuth. Yeah, Max, you, you alluded to it, too, in that, that loss that GBS took to Loyola. You know the Spartans did their homework. Pulikidis won his lab, made the necessary adjustments on the defensive, and they're going to be locked in on the senior captain for the Titans here tonight. So we are getting close to puck drop. Six skaters aside, five up ice, and a goalie for each. And their final preparations, GBN and their specialty cream jerseys here with the throwback Spartan logo, the green trim. White pants with the green and gold trim. Meanwhile, the All Blacks, for, for I almost called them Michigan, for Glenbrook South, of course, <laughs> the Michigan Wolverine helmets. Their alternate jerseys from last season. This is also a all-time jersey matchup as well. These GBN jerseys Ladies debuted today. They look fantastic. Tommy Hawks getting the crowd all riled up down to our left. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, please direct your attention to the score of the box. Where I'm joined by Jack Locallo, left wing on the Pee Wee Major Central State team for the Glenview Stars. Jack has a message for us. Jack? Let's play some hockey. Our favorite words, and we will get it started. Top line of the center, Sandler and Rafalowski, no surprise. Captain Freemuth, Hoffer, and Ventura. We are underway the 2023 Thanksgiving Eve, North South, live from Centennial on the SHL Network. Big hit from Semelhek right off the opening faceoff. That's one of the things these teams like to do in the game like this, get that first hit. Andrew and Wes, you have both talked about that on other broadcasts as Semelhek comes in 
for another hit along the boards, collected by Hoffer, centering pass. Touch pass from Freeman, but nobody back door as Tutsius pinches down to keep play alive. Behind the goal, Semelhack finds Rafalowski, who leads up the boards, trying to find Macinter. It's mishandled in his own zone by McCauley, but quickly turned over now two on one, excuse me, two on two, Freemuth comes forward, leaves for McCauley, McCauley backhanded pass, Semelhek tied up the stick of Freemuth, couldn't get anything on it Great pick up there Max, awesome stick by Semelhek to shut down that chance. Rafalowski in transition, fires a shot, just misses the near post, <laughs> kept in at the point by Charlie Rosen Rosen's going to fire it deep, try to establish possession, but quickly taken away by Wyatt Sherwood Sherwood with speed through the neutral zone Dishes off Kulikowski, shot, looking for a deflection. Raiderin made sure it went wide. Kept in at the point by Vanderplug. But again, cleared out. Shalen with some room. He winds up, big slap shot. Mulvey gets a deflection on it, up into the netting. We'll get an offensive zone draw for GBN. Guys, I think it's apparent already the pace of play is just at an absolute all-time high. We see on the replay here as that puck just misses the net. Both teams early with a chance on net you can tell that there's no way no chance that they're going to ease their way into this game trying to assert that offensive dominance here and early. dylan i'll send it down to you do we have an early penalty that we missed here behind the play yeah yeah guys wyatt sherwood's going to go to the box here i i struggled to get a the call right now elbow, elbow. elbow is the call the official report from down here we're going to get a look at that gbn power play you were talking about early huge opportunity early for glenbrook north looking to break the two-game winning streak for gbs after GBS, of course, snapped that 16-year drought in this game. They'll try to flip the ship. Waiting for it, Semelhack back at the point. Near half wall is Macinter, cross ice. One timer and the stick snaps from Riston Siegel. Bad break for the Spartans is now a two on one. Coming back shorthanded, Freemuth. Pass to Ventura, Ventura's shot into the belly, but we're gonna get a penalty against GBN. It's going to be holding against Riston Siegel. He was without a stick in the remaining minute 30 of that power play for GBN eliminated. Guys, Real unfortunate break there for GBN. He's mentioned the stick of Siegel. You'll see on the replay right there explodes on him on that backdoor opportunity. You see him hustling back, and there you see the slight grab of Zach Freemuth in front of the net. And that's going to eliminate the GBN power play, and we're going to have four on four. Yeah, Guys, last year's game only had two penalties. We've got two less than two minutes in. Great. Great pick up there, Dylan. As going back to that replay too, Raidman, great save. When it first initial save hits him in the belly, he's not able to swallow up that rebound, but great reactionary save to get the second puck from keeping it from going across the line. Four on four hockey for a minute 30 as Semelhack takes it behind his own cage. He's pressured there by Kulikowski, but calmly taken out. Macinter with speed up the left wing. Macinter, he'll go forehand shot right into the chest of Eli Kamen. So guys, talked a lot about GBN starting goaltender this year, Michael Raiden. We were talking about GBS's starting goaltender last year, Luke Winger. Haven't talked about Eli Kamen's yet stepping into big shoes for Luke Winger. Yeah, I mean, Max, you're taking the, the words right out of my mouth. It's hard to fill in with an all-state goalie like Lucas Winger, but Eli Kamen's is doing a great job so far throughout this season. The center draw opposite Stevens. Stevens is able to pull it back to Tutsius. Now turned over. The center side of the net, back to the point. Semel Hack, Semel Hack shot, kicked aside by Kamen's. Now Macinter in a corner and a big hit right in front of the GBS student section. He's able to keep the play alive to Semelhack. But then McCauley steps in front, can't quite get it out. Another nice play by McCauley, but still can't get out. Shot towards goal, kicked aside by Caymans. Put out in front, but Semelhack couldn't get a shot off. These teams are doing their homework. We see some great anticipatory plays already by both sides intercepting passes. Macinter able to change on the fly. Cooper Shalin comes in for the Spartans. Now a bunch of bodies on the ice for GBS, almost too many. With speed comes Stevens, he takes a big hit from Semelhack. Following it up, Kulikowski drops it below the goal. Now Rossi, he's got some space in the near half wall to carry it out of the zone. Drops to Shalin, three on two if he hurries. Offside, just a touch on the near side as Semelhack just a touch too early. Yeah, not an advised play there, moving that puck right before the blue line. We'd like to see them on the three on two, enter the zone, eliminate the threat of a possible offsides. We're gonna get a look at the physical play. Big hit there thrown by GBS, and then on the other end, a response from Jake Semelhack, putting a shoulder into a tightened chest right there. Physicality really picking up in this one. Face off, drawn away from danger. That's Charlie Walker able to play it deep. 
McCauley absorbs a check to get the puck to Vanderplug. Vanderplug, the sophomore, carries it forward, trying to carry it around one man. Shot deflected. Good stick from Logan Lyons to make sure it doesn't get in on Raiderman. Now a 25-second power play for GBS. A shot hits Fremuth on its way to net. Rossi steps in the way, and we get a whistle. And we're going to get another penalty against GBN. Guys, it looks, looks like, like it's going to be a penalty, yeah. Logan Lyons is going to go for board. It looks like it was away from the play. It's, it's, it's hard to tell up here, but there's going to be abbreviated five on three here for the Titans, and then it's going to move on to a five on four after 18 seconds. So great chance early here for the Titans to get that early lead. Evan Polakitis was looking for an explanation. I certainly didn't see it in live action. Usually in this game, guys, you see the referees look to let the players get away with a little bit more with the atmosphere, calling it real tight already to start. McCauley's shot just missing net. Big rebound off the active boards. McCauley's able to get it back. Now Mulvey, top of the circle, shoots just missing. Freeman, or excuse me, Hoffer out in front, trying to get a deflection. First penalty over. Back to five on four. Mulvey from the slot, deflection, they score! Blake Hoffer in front of the net gets the deflection. One to nothing, GBS. Just as we anticipate both these teams real effective on the power play, we see GBS, just as that first penalty expires with the five on four now, they get that puck to the middle of the ice and it's a quick shot from Hoffer. Right there in the, or the tip, sorry, from Hoffer goes up to between the legs of Michael Raderman to break the ice. Yeah, Andrew, just a lot of chaos in front of Raderman right there. A few missed shots that if on target, possibly gonna have force a great save from Raderman, but relentless pressure by the Titans early and they're off and running here with less than four minutes into this game. A little bit of a fortunate break, as mentioned, that comes just after the five on three ended, so we'll be at even strength. I was just gonna say, a little bit of a break, at least for GBN, that back to full strength. But a power play goal for GBS, gets things started, looking to make it three in a row in this rivalry. Now Dylan Monaghan getting his first ice time, so is Pajerski. Mulvey chips it in. Stopped as they enter the zone by Siegel. Now rink wide pass with speed coming for Daniel Rubin. Quickly taken out, that misses everybody. And ensuring it goes long enough for icing is Raiderman, so an offensive zone draw coming for GBN. Such an important shift this one right after a goal. Important for GBN to get the puck back in the offensive zone, settle things down, show that they're here for a fight. Andrew, that's a great pickup. You gotta find some way to, to turn that, that momentum back in your favor after this early goal. A great chance here with an offensive zone faceoff. Ruben with the faceoff, not able to win it as Vergamini gets along the far half wall. Aiden Weller with the puck, gets it up to Pierce Davidson, trying to chip it out of the zone. Ruben kept it in for a minute, but now Weller will be able to carry it out himself. Brady Henriksen getting his ice time. Now Davidson finds Pajerski. Tried to find Monaghan up the wall, but Ruben steps in front of that. Weller D to D. Now Vergamini misses his intended target. Riston Siegel fires it through the middle of the ice, intercepted by Monaghan. GBN Forecheck doing a really good job shutting things down on the GBS breakout. Just getting started here live from Centennial Ice Arena. This stretch pass misses everybody to be icing. An offensive zone draw coming for GBS. Guys, a little bit of dip in the pace of play as we expected. That initial energy that you have coming out of the tunnel. You hear the anthem, everybody's in the stands. You get it super excited. The last two minutes, the pace has slowed down just a little bit. Both teams finally ease their way into this game. Yeah, unfortunately for GBN, they're icing with not any real true pressure, but. As mentioned, they did a good job on that forecheck for about a good minute, not letting GBS really get the puck past the red line. Something to watch out for. Offensive zone draw for GBS. Cesario backhands it, looking for Sokol. Sokol, one of the seven younger brothers in this game. A family affair is Glenbrook North and Glenbrook South Hockey. Of course, one of those siblings up here in the booth. <laughs> Talk about a hatred that runs deep, huh, Max? No doubt about it. Travis Circus leaves it behind the goal, looking try to get some possession started for GBN, but GBS doing a nice job of making sure that can't go any further. Good hit right in front of the GBS bench, but absorbing it and playing it forward. Trying to center it, looking for Cesario. It's off the referee, backhanded pass as Raiderman 
Alertly able to scoop that up just under 11 to go in the first. Almost taking advantage of a fortunate bounce. You mentioned puck bouncing off the referee, looking to get it immediately to the front of that as we're going to get another look at this hit here thrown by McDermott. You see that's textbook, getting that hip, driving him right into the boards. And right there, you see that puck goes off the stick of Radom, and alertly he's able to pounce on it. Andrew, we've seen a few of those big hits early. So that's something that we're, we're used to in this big rivalry game that we've got ongoing here tonight. The center and Freemuth on the draw. We're going to see this battle all night long. It's going to be critical to the outcome. The center's able to win it. Rafalowski, though, trying to find possession, still scrambling for it. Eventually, Freemuth able to chip it forward. Five-foot line right there. That's all about a will and strength to keep that puck in the zone by GBS. Now Blake Hoffer has two Spartans trying to wrestle the puck away. Turned over, Ventura in the slot, looking for space. Now McCauley, he shoots. Blocker save from Raiderman. Ventura had some room to shoot. Carrying out Macinter, he's got his arms being tugged on. GBN Bench wants a penalty, not going to get one. Shot in on Caymans, blockers it away. And Freemuth takes over for GBS. Flying up the left wing, trying to cross between two. Immediately sandwiched by two Spartans. Sandler the other way for GBN, trying to catch up to it. You see the back pressure of GBN there all alert when Freemuth has that puck racing down the ice. Kristen Siegel trying to get the puck deep. He finishes a check right in front of the GBS bench. Gets it deep for Rafalowski. Not much support there. Puck still bouncing around as Eli Kamens. A little bit of trouble handling the puck in his crease. Rafalowski centering pass. Nobody there. Semmel hack top of the circle. Shoots. Kicked aside. Now Ventura chips it up the near wall and into the neutral zone. Rossi alertly lets it go through his legs to avoid offsides. Big wind up. Looked like that puck went in and out of the glove of Raiderman. Shalen now gets it rink wide. Rossi with some space. Rossi's shot. Blockered away by Eli Kamens. Kamens settling into this game. He's got a few saves now. Back to the point. Shot deflects a couple of times. Scooped up by Kamens. Offensive zone draw coming for GBN. Yeah, Max is talking about those saves. Shots on goal eight to seven in favor of the Titans. So each goalie has seven saves. You saw McCauley try a half quarter there. Ryan Mulvey against Stevenson a couple of weeks ago scored from the red line at center ice. So Marty McCauley trying to do that as well. I don't think that's going to beat Raiderman tonight, but as they say, no shot on goal is a bad shot on goal. As they also say, you never know what happens when you go or get the puck to the front of the net, especially in a game like this. Yeah, good things happen when the puck sits on that, right, Andrea? Cooper Shalen can't get the puck as it rung around the boards out of the zone. Rink wide to nobody. Semelhack steps in front of that, tosses in towards Caymans. GBN's forward's not quite able to set up much of a four check or cycle thus far. They've been able to get the puck deep, but not able to establish much possession in the offensive zone. They might not be forcing turnovers in the offensive zone, but it's real tough for GBS to get by the GBN defenseman right now. Here's Daniel Rubin from behind his own goal. Chips forward, touch pass from Henriksen. Was looking for Kevin Burns on the other side of it, but turned over at center ice. Now firing it forward is Aiden Weller. Burns in the corner, gets pressure quickly from Sokol. Chips it off the glass and out. That's going to stay in the GBN zone for an offensive draw for the Titans. Yeah, guys, we highlighted the goalies a, a few minutes ago, and Raiderman has done a great job here early, a relentless pressure by the, the Titans here early, and a great pushback finally by the, the, by the Spartans here. So expect to, to go a little bit of a goalie duel as we go along here tonight. I'd have to say Coach Evan Polkietis probably is not happy being down one nothing, but taking away the special teams, has to be real happy with the way his team's been playing. Ventura fires, shot blocked on its way to net. Sandler looking for Rafalowski on the saucer pass. Rafalowski finds the puck finally, fires it deep, goes for a change. Now McCauley, stretch pass looking for Freemuth. Lions in the corner with him. He's going to pin him against the boards, looking for some help from Siegel. He gets it, but not out. McCauley keeps in at the point. His shot blockered away by Raiderman. Right to the stick of Sandler. Siegel rink wide now. Sandler with some space. Far circle shoots. Never got all the way through. Good job by Toots. He has to get his stick in the shooting lane. Real nifty move there by Sandler at the blue line. Give himself some space. Siegel turns, fires, gets it deep. 
GBN's going to get three or four fresh bodies on the ice. Charlie Walker on the back end for GBN. McCauley's going to fire it deep. Siegel looking for an option. Crafty play there to get it out of the zone. Just misses Circus. Now turned over as Mark Bazarski steps in. Looking for a centering pass. Goes off the side of the cage. And Pierce Davidson able to carry it out for GBS. Pajerski goes between the legs and then gets absolutely destroyed on the big hit from Charlie Walker. Textbook hit there from nine and cream. Now a shot blockered between the legs, sitting on the goal line. Just able to swipe it away was Vanderplug. I'll tell you what, fellas. Caymans has had a little bit of trouble with those long shots. We saw a rebound chance earlier. That one sneaks through, almost making its way into the net. Monaghan gets checked at center ice. Now hits going back and forth. Eventually, Semelhack's going to fire it deep. Now Cooper Shalen able to get to the puck. Vanderplug battles with him. Sherwood, far half wall, turns, tries to swipe it out of the zone, but Semelhack was able to keep it in for a minute. Now Sherwood trying to win a race down ice. Good stick in the, in the shooting lane from Charlie Rosen. Back out to center ice. You see the speed there from Wyatt Sherwood. He was a good 10, 15 feet back and won the race to that puck. Now Miller, Miller's shot, gloved, and again bobbled by Caymans. And Les, that's the third or fourth bobble we've seen from Caymans here in the first period. If you're GBN, you got to go to school on that. Guys, yeah, we know there's a lot of nervous energy. And we even saw on the dump, and it hits his glove, bounces out. So some shaky rebounds for the Titans netminder there. If you're the Spartans, you want to get everything you can on net. You saw on that last blocker save, squeaks behind him as we get a great replay on that. Vanderpluth with a great reactionary save to keep that puck from going across the line. But from the Spartans' end, just start shooting pucks anywhere and everywhere on the Titans netminder. Semelheck does just that, fires it just a bit wide. Burns trying to catch up to it. Instead, it's Logan Lyons. Henriksen trying to catch up below the goal line, can't find it. GBN putting the pressure on, trying to force some mistakes from GBS. That's what Loyola did a really good job of Sunday night. They were patient. They forced turnovers and they took advantage. GBN trying to play the same playbook as that puck trickles through to Caymans. He falls his glove on it. Offensive zone draw for GBN. GBN going getting advantage there off of the turnover. They're really starting to turn up the play. Most of this play is coming to our left in the booth here, fellas. I think it's just a matter of time if GBN keeps this up until they can get themselves a bouncer or an A-grade chance. Yeah, the, the GBN defense is doing a great job in the neutral zone of stepping up, really stymieing that uh, Titans offense as it's coming here across this red line to our, our left, Andrew. Now Weller getting pressure, gets checked down to the ice. Siegel trying, excuse me, Rubin trying to pry it free in the corner. Final score of last year's game. GBN, it's been a minute now since they've scored in this game. And I don't just mean this year. This puck misses everybody. Vanderplug let it go, so they're going to wave icing. Comes up to Monaghan. Deflects. Semelhek steps up. Gets it on to Miller. Trying a quick pass. Miller gets it right back with some speed up the right side. Shalen coming down the slot. Shot blockered away. Right back to Summelhack at the point. He takes a big hit well after he got rid of the puck. Thought we could have seen a penalty there. We don't get one. Shalen behind the goal, looking for out in front. Goes right to the stick of Sherwood. Now three on two, here comes GBS. Well, instead, Vanderplug goes for a change, so two on two. Sherwood far half wall. Now Miller. Miller and Sherwood going at each other a little bit right in front of the referee, and you can 
don't know if you can hear it, but we can. That referee's having a conversation mid-play saying, calm it down, fellas. Don't want to call a penalty on you, but I will. Yeah, not in real agreement with the referee right now. They came out calling a lot of penalties right away, trying to set the tone, and we're not at the end of the first period. And we're already trying to see them put the whistles in their pocket, just looking for a little consistency. Guys, that was Zach Fremuth's 91st career Glenbrook South goal. He was on an absolute heater coming into this game, held scoreless against Loyola last time out. But leading up to that game, six in a row with multiple points, most yeah. of them goals. Yeah, Dylan and the, and the captain clicking with over a goal a game here in SHL play. So if you're the Spartans, you have to know where 81 and black is at all times. Ruben and Pajerski on the draw. Monaghan gets it, takes a below goal. Now a shot from the point. Raiderman gets a piece. Stuff attempt, goals off its post. And we get a whistle as GBS just inches away from three to nothing. Great save by Raiderman there with traffic in front, and then a little bit of contact, full split. Surprised, yeah, Max, you, you say it, a little bit of a push. Surprised they're not, and there's no goalie interference, but Raiderman has really he's kept his team in it so far and has made a few great saves here early, and you can see a little bit of disgust as he looks to the refs as we get things settled down here. Also something to take note of taking it, getting a chance off of an offensive zone faceoff already for GBS in this one. Rafalowski escorts it well out into neutral zone. Quick pass, Ventura leaves for Freemuth. Freemuth shot off the post. Foul up Hoffer, back to Freemuth. One-timer deflects up into the glass. Ventura below goal. It's the first line again for GBS, getting all these chances. Here's Rafalowski with speed up the left wing. He's going to draw to his backhand, fire towards net again, bounces out awkwardly. Siegel winds up, shoots, but it's blocked. Ventura couldn't catch up to it. Lions there to cut off the angle. We're seeing all these pucks just float through the slot to the high slot area for GBN. Nobody there. Any Spartan and, and really anywhere close to the front of the net to pick up any of this loose change that's sitting right there. Rafalowski, good stick lift, trying to get it to Sandler in the slot, but intercepted. Freemuth brings it forward. Now Hoffer leaves for Ventura wide. Ventura steered nicely by Siegel. Huge hit into the corner. And he's down in a little bit of pain and discomfort. And the trainer being called out. Didn't necessarily think there was anything untoward about the hit. Just a good physical hockey play in the corner. Max, yeah, hockey is a physical game. It's hard to see from our vantage point, but tries to take the puck wide and ooh, just might have caught that. That could have been. Might have caught that shoulder in an awkward spot. Could have potentially popped it out. I've seen some, some weird angle hits like that before, but glad to see he's back up on his feet, might have just got the wind knocked out of him. And, and, and frankly, on replay, there might have been a little bit more of a penalty there than I thought at first blush. Completely agree, Max. Looked like that hit came a little bit more from behind than we initially thought. Very easily could have been called a penalty. But again, after that opening four or five minutes where the referees called three penalties, they've elected to keep the whistle in their pocket. Andrew, you made a good call earlier too. Usually the refs like to stay out of the, the, the pace of play like that, not at the, usually less penalties called than early. There was three or four in the first four or five minutes. There's something that's very uncharacteristic in a big game like tonight. So because of the head contact, or the head concern, I should say, the draw comes out to the neutral zone. As Gene Honda informs us, one minute remaining in the first period. Here's Riston Siegel. Out to Sherwood, he carries it into the zone, tries to play it past Siegel at the blue line. Circus checked off the puck, fired in towards Raiderman. Now Kulikowski trying to chase. See GBS falling back a little bit to the neutral zone, looking to trap GBN. Lions carrying it forward. Runs into his own man, right into the zone is Circus and turns it over. Here's Stevens, pulls to his forehand. It's deflected up into the netting with 16 to go in the first. Yeah. Guys, Will Stevens, number 77 for the Titans that just took that shot, was named one of four, three alternate captains this year. The others being Ryan Mulvey and Marty McCauley. Will Stevens, one of three players that has been on this team for three years at least. That's him, Freemuth, and Eli Kamins. Great tidbit there from you, Dylan. Again, we saw GBS go into that neutral zone trap, confusing the GBN defense and forcing that turnover lead to that chance for Stevens. Freemuth and Shalen to the left of Raiderman. 
Shalen won it, hit the linesman. Almost a break for GBS, but Rossi, now Rossi whiffs on it. Here's Freeman for Athwal. These are the type of mistakes that GBS has capitalized on all season. Tutsius crossed to McCauley, top of the circle, has it roll off his stick, blocked, and that will do it for the first period. After one, a two to nothing GBS lead in a period, guys. GBN had chances, mistakes killed him. Couldn't put it better myself. It's just the costly mistakes for GBN. I think even strength, they probably had the better of play, played in GBS's zone a little bit more. Just GBS was able to capitalize on those mistakes. Chicago Blackhawks rivalry series continues all winter long, featuring some of the fiercest matchups in Illinois high school hockey. Don't miss out on the action to see games, dates, times, and details. Head over to blackhawks.com slash amateur. Yeah, uh, Andrew, I couldn't agree with you more. G-Man really controlled the pace of play after that, those initial penalties there early. It's just they got to go to the greasy areas. You talked about the pucks bounce a lot in the slot in front of the Titans netminder. If there's more Spartans in that zone, it just creates a little bit more chaos. Potentially, find, The puck potentially finds its way across the line and gets the Spartans back into this game. Also, GBS doing a really good job, I mentioned, capitalizing on their chances, setting up that neutral zone trap, trying to slow down this GBN team that's been trying to move quickly through the neutral zone. They've had space at times. They've also been shut down. Yeah, you can see uh, the way that the, the Spartans coaching staff is trying to adjust. They're sending two of those wingers outside of the zone, trying to push that trap a little bit further back so the, the Spartans' defense can have a little bit more space coming up the ice. Yeah, want to see those GBN defense move with speed. So we're going to send it down to ice level now where Jenna Rose is standing by with GBN captain Ryan Sandler. Jenna. We are now joined by captain Ryan Sandler. Uh, GBS able to put up two here in the first period. How do you better eliminate those offensive opportunities for them? Uh, we got to take care of our blue lines. First things first, I mean, second goal off of the turnover, five feet from our blue line, it's unacceptable. Um, other than that, just getting back, preventing three on twos, odd man rushes. But uh, we got to get shots on net on this guy because I think that I'm confident we can get through. Is that pretty much verbatim coach's message there? Yes, sir. Yeah, all right. <laughs> hey, we're good. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Yeah, that's what we thought, right? Obviously very unhappy with the turnover, and like we were speculating up here, they got to get pucks in on Gaiman's. He's coughed up four or five rebounds right out in front. There just hasn't been any cream sweaters there waiting for it. Absolutely. Also, some of the shots GBN are taking right off the rush once you cross the blue line, there's no time to get any players to the front of the net. you got to look to have a little bit of patience, look to set things up just a little bit, let those guys get to the front of the net. Then look to throw the puck on net on Cayman's looking for a rebound. Yeah, you talk about how good this team is. They had 14 shots on net and NG began, and they're, they're, not, they're not satisfied. They're not happy with that. Like you said, a lot of those shots have been from distance. They haven't been from those greasy areas in front of the net. But, but still, 14 shots is a lot. They're still testing Cayman's, even, even, even if it is from the outside. 14 shots speaks enough. This game is far from over. Second period underway. Team switch side. The period of the long change. I always like to point that out especially at the high school level. Just a little bit farther to get to your bench. Got to be a little bit cleaner in your exits and certainly in your changes. Here's Charlie Rosen behind his own goal. Corner Ryan Sandler. Next goal in this game, fellas, feels huge. A three to nothing GBS lead would feel like an incredibly tough hill to climb. Two to one and GBN's right back in it. Absolutely. And you could say two goal lead in hockey, most dangerous lead. Oh, yeah, 100%, Andrew. Back to the point. And trying to get a shot off was Semelhack, but had it stuck between his skates and just has to fire it deep. McCauley tugged on his wrists and fires it deep. Semelhack in the corner. Hoffer coming to join to try to help. He's going to wrap it around the boards and get it to Rafalowski. Sandler carries through, chips it on to Sandler. Sandler behind one man, gets taken down. That might be a penalty shot. He looked like he was winding up to maybe get ready to shoot. I see a hooking call, no penalty shot, but Wes, he was in on goal and looked like he was reaching to shoot. Max, we're going to get a great replay. A little inside, outside, a little bit of free space there, and yet oh, could have easily, easy, the puck could easily be at center ice here for a penalty shot, but it looks like the faceoff is going to come to Cayman's left, and... GBN's going to get their first real power play opportunity here in this game. So talk about the captain stepping up and making a play, getting his team on the power play. Yeah, great move there from Ryan Samuel, one-on-one -on -one with the defenseman. That whole play gets set up on their own end. Samuel Heck winning the battle, wrapping it to Rafalowski, saying a clean breakout. Rafalowski to Macinter, to Sandler, gave GBN that rush and that chance. So GBN only had 30 seconds on their first power play before an offsetting minor cancel out the rest. Here's Siegel, drop past to Macinter, top of the circle. 
Siegel waiting for it at the slot extended. Shot just getting enough was Kamen's as Rafalowski had a nice screen in front. Now Rafalowski below the goal. Macinter back up top Siegel. Right back to Macinter, near faceoff dot. High slot shot from Siegel, misses the target. Active boards, able to keep it in as Siegel. Leaves it again, Macinter, top of the circle, shoots. Getting a piece of it was Kamen's. Getting one more opportunity here from Rafalowski back to Siegel. Now Macinter, right back to Siegel. Siegel looks, shoots, big save, follow up chance, not able to get a shot off as Sandler as Kamen's gets just enough. Could have possibly been a penalty in front there as Sandler got taken down. Now 107 to go on the power play. Freemuth out there gonna try to kill some of it. An extra puck there somehow ended up on the ice. Not exactly sure how. Max, you mentioned the long change in the second period. How about here in the second period, the team shooting on the sides of their big, uh, huge student sections, GBN, Fans all in white were into every play going on down there. Yeah, guys, we're going to see the replay of that last attempt there. Caymans with a great glove save through traffic. And relentless pressure by the Spartans on their first real uh, power play opportunity here. Puck tonight. was just tantalizingly waiting there on the goal line, but no, or I should say in the slot, no one could get a shot off for GBN. McCauley fires towards Raiderman. Puck waiting right out in front for Freemuth. Now shorthanded, GBS trying to waste some time. GBN able to get possession. Up the ice they come. Rink wide, Freemuth gets a deflection. Oh, almost takes out. Look out down the there, photographer. Dylan. Photographer. <laughs> yeah, maybe I should get off this chair for a second. <laughs> <laughs> Might need to get you a helmet or something of the like down there. Pucks flying at high speed, you and Jenna in the, in the box. I see a camera guy over here with the nice white helmet. Is that a safe. GoPro on his head or is that just? No, oh. I don't think so. Kind of looks like it from here. That'd be kind of cool. Cameraman with the stills and then the GoPro on his head. It's all fun and games. Jimmy, that. can we get that wired up for next game? <laughs> Puck comes right at your face. Here's Macinter on the power play. Shoots, block it away by Caymans. Sandler drops from Macinter. Cross ice. Back up top, Siegel. Freemuth given pressure. Siegel does a nice job of buying space and time. Siegel again. Far half wall, the shot. Pat away. By Caymans, but not out. Second attempt clearance from McCauley clears. 10 seconds left on the power play. Real great pursuit there from GBS. Well, Freemuth gonna get some possession and waste the rest of the power play, so good kill there from GBS, who came into the game at just 76% on the penalty kill. Now two for two. Here's Rafalowski, crosses over, fires towards net, getting a piece of it. Was Semelhack, but stopped it in its tracks. Now Ventura spins it around, McCauley, far half wall. Gonna carry it out, stretch pass, gets it off the stick of Sherwood. Rossi comes in support in the corner. Pops out Rafalowski, has been out there for a while. All the power play and now into this five on five action as Rossi's gonna get charged with a hooking call there. It's gonna be a power play coming for GBS, at least one if not two on Rossi. Now with the extra man, Steven skates forward. Finally touched by the Spartans. And Rossi is going to head to the box. Just an uncharacteristic play by Spartans in their own offensive zone. Rossi, Max, you mentioned it. Could be sent for two. He's going to go for one, and we're going to get another look at this Titans power play. Yeah, exactly what the Spartans don't need right now. Already down two in the middle of the second period. Can't go shorthanded. Give GBS the chance to really put their foot on the throat of this game. Andrew, especially after some great offensive opportunities by the Spartans as well, it seemed like they finally got their confidence on the offensive end here in this game. So GBS got their first goal of the game on the power play back in the first period, trying to make it two. Puck comes back to McCauley at the point. McCauley with lots of space, shoots, blockered away by Raiderman. He had some space as he skated up the slot. Freemuth leaves for McCauley. Holly looking for some space. Right back, Freemuth, far circle, shoots, misses the net. And that's going to ricochet all the way out of the zone. Freemuth sticks between two guys, finds Ventura near circle. Now Siegel going to try to wrap it around the boards and does. If GBN hurries, they could have an odd man rush coming back the other way, shorthanded. Shooting, Shaylin fought off by Caymans. 
Trying to fire it right back, but blocked by Ventura. Offer with speed and space up the left wing. Skates, stops, he's gonna let his power play set up. Finds McCauley, McCauley's shot, blocker it away, still bouncing around in front of Raiderman. And swiped away and eventually cleared with a minute to go on the power play. Four or three bodies for GBS. Get in front of the net when that shot's coming from McCauley. We see Raiderman able to get, put a hard rebound out, gives his players a chance to get to that puck on the wall and clear. McCauley finds Sherwood. Sherwood, the no-look pass, trying to find Stevens, but cleared again by GBN. A couple great clears here by the Spartans in their defensive zone. The previous one, Shalen was hemmed in deep, came all the way down in the offensive zone on that odd man opportunity. They really needed a change. The Spartans able to get one. Puck bouncing around the neutral zone. Vanderplug trying to put it into the GBN zone. He carries it forward. He loses an edge. Puck bouncing in front of Raiderman. Not able to get a heavy shot off. Tutsius gloves it and it just sits at the blue line. Now trying shorthander and Henriksen here in the last 15 of the kill. Instead, he's going to play back Rafalowski who whiffs on it. Instead, has a man, gets it far side. Rafalowski with five to go on the power play. Trying to get it out in front. Stuff attempt shorthanded. Not able to get it past Caymans who had the bottom half of his net covered. Off the power play now. Here's full strength shot from Miller. Misses the net. GBN trying to get reset back five on five. And they'll take a breath back out in the zone from Charlie Rosen. Great sequence there for GBN, gain a bunch of pressure and chances on that rush. Tutsius absorbs a hit from Mazarski. Miller intercepts in the neutral zone. Now he has his hand slashed on, but no call from our referee. Jake McDermott gets the puck, misses his intended target. Davidson trying to set himself up a breakaway. No. Semohack has Davidson all over him into the GBN zone. McDermott now at center ice, just going to fire it deep. Vanderplug turns it over. Here's Ruben. Ruben backhanded shot, almost squeaks through the legs of. Caymans and now pushing and shoving with Vanderplug and McDermott after the whistle. Yeah, Chippian is starting to amp up here. Ruben just finds the puck. I think if he's a left-handed shot, he's able to push that in if it's some free space. But as we see, we'll see in the replay here, maybe finds it on the backhand, not able to turn it over to the forehand. And Caymans holding the, the, that post strong as GBN going to the paint hard. Something that you're going to see a lot more of as this game goes along, finding those soft areas right in front of the tight netminder. Yeah, you saw the chance there from Hemrickson. Now you see the chance for Ruben, just unable to really get a handle on that puck. But still, came and struggled to hold that one. If GBN can get somebody going to the net, pretty good chance they're going to walk away with a good chance to score. Another turnover, but not able to get it as Mazarski comes loose as Ruben still battling for it. His pass towards the front of the net misses everybody. Now a speed in transition comes on again. Semelhek does a nice job of slowing the rush. He's going to set up Mazursky, he, he scores! scores. Mazursky from just over center ice gets it past Caymans, and it's two to one. Max, we've been alluding to it all day. Caymans has had trouble tracking the puck here in this building. Always a tricky save, Wes. You'll tell us with a bouncing puck. We'll get another look at it here. Yeah, he's, he's really just trying to get this puck in deep, and Knuckles a little bit hits the ice right before it hits Caymans, and. It's almost like when you're a shortstop trying to pick that ball up as it's coming to you hot and just finds that almost six hole in the elbow of Camus and the Spartans are on the board. I started to look down at my sheet and write a note and I hear Andrew Rubin say, oh my God, he scored or something like that. Felt like I was asleep at the wheel, but the shot came from the W just across half line. I thought that was when I could make a note. I think one of you alluded to it too, of a, of a puck going in like that uh, from, from center ice, if you will. It might have been a, on Raiderman, I'm not really sure which one, but like you said, it's never a bad idea to get the puck to the net and the Spartans cut the lead in half and find themselves back in the game. And the GBN faithful has come alive. So for Mazursky, it's his second goal of SHL play. GBS trying to respond. And Wes, how often do we talk about the importance of that first shift after a goal for both teams? GBS trying to respond right away. And we see a great forecheck here by the Titans trying to get that momentum back in their favor. Rossi was looking for a stretch pass. Tutsi does a nice job stepping in the way of it. Now Siegel gets it across with some space, comes Burns. 
Burns fires it in, and you can tell the plan right now is an assault on the Cayman's net. GBN feels like they need to get as many as they can on 31. Here's Sherwood trying to respond. He shoots, easily sticked aside by Raiderman. Battling in the corner, puck almost bounces out in front, firing it off the side of the net. Pops out to the far circle, but no one from the Titans side there to play it. Now Ross, he drags to his backhand around Mulvey. Looking behind the goal, centering pass, just missing the stick of Burns. Shot to flex wide to the near half wall. GBN had a four on two on that rush. I don't think they knew it. What a crazy bounce off the stanchion. We see that bounce. It happened a couple of years ago in the new Trier Loyola game here that was here that ended up being game deciding. It was this exact spot where there's a door entry right in front of us here at the blue line. That is one to keep an eye on. It's a great memory from you there, Max. I can remember that. There's much more important things I can't remember. The unofficial commissioner of the SHL down to our left here, Andrew Room, and <laughs> that photographic memory of Mr. Max Anderson. Weller chips it up the boards. Ventura keeps it alive. Fortunate bounce to Hoffer. He shoots right into the chest of Raiderman. Boys, 7.39 to go. Talked about that next goal being critical, now a one goal game. We talked about getting shots in on Cayman, already nine shots on goal by the Spartans. We have got less than, just, just or should it say over, just over seven and a half minutes left to play here in the second period. Definitely the message from that, that coaching staff on the Spartans bench, get everything that you can to the net and good things will happen. Things picking up for GBN, but also GBS getting a few chances in that last minute or two. First real chances we've seen for GBS in a good five minutes here in the second period. Real important response shift from the Titans. So finally after what feels like years, here's a quick shot off the draw. This GBN faithful didn't get to cheer at all in last year's game. And it took him a period and a half to cheer in this one. Almost feels like a weight off the shoulders. You can feel the tension on the GBN side, a lot more relaxed. It's a deep breath for the Spartan faithful down here to our right. They know their team's got a lot of momentum here in the second period, expecting that second goal to come anytime now. Way more relaxed, but again, another offensive zone chance for this Freemuth line off of a faceoff. We got a quick whistle on a save from Raiderman. Now McCauley and Tutsius on the back end for GBS. Stretch pass finds Freemuth. Freemuth in all alone. He draws to his back end. He scores! Zach Freemuth does it again and makes it three to one. GBS definitely winning the battle of the first lines here. We've already seen this is the second goal that Freemuth has. If you're GBN, you have to wonder how 81 gets in behind, but he gets that stretch pass. We see the speed, makes no mistake, goes forehand, backhand, beats Michael Radom into the far post, and extends the lead for the Titans to two. Yeah, Andrew, what a move by 81 in black. Second goal of the game just freezes Raiderman with that initial uh, shot fake and then beats him to that far post in the... Titans find that two goal lead back here again, 7-19 here in the second. That is exactly what he does, guys. Almost every goal he scores, you have no idea it's coming maybe three, four seconds before it. What a move. And the number one player in the state, I think, is a fair statement, and we're going to get a penalty and probably a significant one against GBN to boot. Delayed penalty as Ventura carries it forward, drops it below the goal, wrist and Siegel. That's going to be Ryan Sandler, too, and it might be more than just two guys. That was a pretty significant hit, 200 feet from his own goal. Sandler and Tutsius having a conversation about it. Looks like the initial signal is going to be a check from behind, going to be a 2-10, and 10. and just as we were talking about, looks like GBN's getting things back on track. Shoot themselves in the foot, give up the goal, and now they're going to lose their captain for 12 minutes. Yeah, you talk about having a great response shift after a goal, and you can't find yourself back down a, a, a man if you're the Spartans here. So big kill to try and once again change the momentum back in their favor. But you got you got that top line of GBS coming back out and trying to make to try and make this a th three goal game. Looks Guys, like we're gonna get the second unit for GBS to start this power play. It is gonna be a two and a ten down here in the penalty box. That's what I thought is a fortunate bounce. Now a breakaway chance. On comes Rafalowski. He loses the puck in his skates, not able to get a shot off. Yeah, it looks like he can never get that puck settled down. Stevens comes forward, tries to shoot, whiffs on it. Sherwood below the goal line. Wyatt Sherwood in the corner. Finds McCauley. McCauley trying to create some space. Former mission player. Playing his senior year back here with Glenbrook South. 
Here's Vanderplug. Shot gets a deflection. Pops high in the air. Swatted away. McCauley's shot. He scores! McCauley sneaks it past Raiderman. And it's 4-1 to one, GBS. Guys, that puck had eyes. We had a great sight line of the GBN net. It looks like Raiderman didn't see that puck until the last second. Just another relentless power play by the Titans, and they find that three-goal lead. You mentioned it, Wes. We'll get a great look from the view here as well. We get a great look. All sorts of traffic in front of Raiderman. GBN forward loses McCauley up top. Riston Siegel also had no stick on the play, and GBS extends their lead now to three with 6.14 to go here in the second period. Guys, do you, do you, if you're the, Spart or the Spartans, do you think about taking that timeout here in the second period to try and slow things down and turn things in your favor? Or I guess, what do you think that? Things have changed so quickly in this game, I don't think it's really needed. GBN, just 20 seconds ago, had almost a breakaway opportunity. The puck rolled off their stick. Just have to keep the great mindset and have good leadership on that bench to keep them focused. Understand this game's not over with, but if you're GBS, you got to keep the pedal to the metal on GBN right now. Guys, GBS's three-goal lead right now is the first three-goal lead in this game since the 2018 edition back at the old Glenview Ice Center. GBS well on their way here to a third straight win in this game. Lots of time left, about 22 minutes, but... GBN is going to have to find some goals in a hurry. They've had their chances. Eli Kamens has been a little bit loose in net. has given up a bunch of rebounds. GBN just have not been able to take advantage of those in front as he pops that right into his glove. Vanderplug and Henriksen wrestle after the whistle. Again, we see GBN trying to get back to getting pucks on net. Not really much cooking for them there. Nobody getting to that front of the net. Yeah, and you score that first goal off of a weird bounce. You get a little of uh, confidence from that. And ever since then, it's been all GBS. So great opportunity here for the Spartans. Got an offensive zone face off. Trying to create some more momentum in the offensive zone. Face off draw in the offensive zone for GBN. Not able to win it as Mulvey gets it off the draw. Offer quick touch pass right to Freemuth. Good stick at the blue line to slow him down. Comes back to Freemuth, trying to handle as it bounces around his skates. Eventually, Semelhack. Spins it around Lions. Ventura gives pressure, but not able to force the turnover. Stick goes flying in front of the GBS student section. Doesn't take much to impress those students down onto our left. Both teams' student sections just looking for any reason to cheer in a game like this. Sherwood's pass misses everybody. Semelhack back to play it, trying to get it out. Kept in just no. Would have been offsides. It is offsides, says our linesman. Real time, thought he might have kept it in, but that linesman right on top of it. Andrew, you talk about the student section just wanting a reason to cheer. I bet you there's a lot of students here witnessing their high school's hockey team for the very first time, and what an atmosphere to get them hyped about it. This is what high school hockey is supposed to be, a packed barn. They say 1,200. I'm going to say there's a few more than that. Every seat, and there's wrapped around the boards. High school hockey alive and well here in Illinois. Frank Serma lets that go shy of center ice. So it's going to be icing against GBS with 435 left in the second. You hear it all the time on the network. Icing's just a few feet from the red line. Absolutely drive a coach insane. Have to take that one extra, two extra steps and your four, difference of four checking to having a face off in your own zone. <laughs> Andrew, as this, you say that, you see uh, Coach Filmo with his palms up looking at his defenseman. You can tell he's not happy about that last play. He doesn't play. want to give this GBN side any room to breathe, any reason to believe. Now back at the point, here's a shot to flex forward as Mazursky gets checked out in front of the net. Big hit right down to our right from McDermott. Now Weller, stretch pass to Serma. Serma and Cesario exchange along the far half wall. Charlie Rosen looking for the stretch pass to find McDermott. Goes back past him to Vergamini. Now Rubin trying to get something started for GBN who fell back in the game at 2-1. Had that all-important third goal we talked about. And then in just about a minute, GBS scored two goals, and they've got a three-goal advantage total. Now Sherwood almost off and running with turnover. Yeah. 
A lot of commotion going on right now in the neutral zone. Finally, McDermott able to break it. He comes forward, shoots, just able to get enough of it was Caymans. And he'll fall on the rebound with 3.23 to go in the second. Guys, there was room in that five hole open. Caymans able to squeeze the pads at the last second. He's had some shaky rebounds, but he's really kept his team in it. This Spartans offense has been relentless looking at the shots right now, 27 through the first two periods already. So he's been a rock back there, but the Spartans are looking to get after him here in the last three minutes. Face off, puck comes to the corner. Vanderplug not able to win it. Instead, it's Kevin Burns. Burns back to the point. Fired towards net, but wide. Shalen along the far half wall. Gets it right back underneath the circus. Circus checked by Vanderplug. Now four bodies come together to battle it out. Circus able to get to it, back to the point, but not able to handle it at the blue line. Much to the dismay of Evan Polakitas, who just looks to the ceiling. And now a turnover, Sherwood shot, just missing the far post. Everything coming up tight and way right now. As Kulikowski tried to play it forward and said turnover, here's Cooper Shalin. Shalin, good stick lift from Freemuth on the back check. Stuff attempt from Shalin. And Kamen's able to get enough. Now Freeman's had enough of Burns' antics in front of his goaltender, and they're both going to get tossed. I know coaches like to see players come to the defense. Initial signals are going to be coincidental minors. That's not what you want to see if you're GBS. Zach Freeman, as mentioned, pop, quite possibly the most valuable player in the entire state of Illinois. You'd like to see somebody else take that roughing penalty for the Titans. Yeah, Andrew, as we look at this replay, if you're the Spartans, this is what you want more of. Go to the net hard, try and create some chaos, and 36 in white go, gets a little bit more than he was bargaining for, but I think that's the MO for the Spartans here going forward is try to get to that crease of the Titans, force Caymans to make a big save, and then go from there. Captain being the captain, right? He'd seen enough. He said, I can sit for two minutes if everybody knows that you can't do that in front of my goaltender. Up 4-1, to one, you can take those sorts of liberties. Trying to set the tone for that Spartans group down there, Max. McCauley collects below his goal line. A stick lift from Macinter now with some space. Rossi was looking for it in front of the net. Couldn't get it to him. Macinter trapped in the corner by McCauley. Rafalowski coming over to help. Puck pops out, side of the net, trying to get a shot off Rossi. It whiffs, collecting Macinter's shot. Never got all the way through. Looked for GBS to be blocking lots of shots. They definitely know Cayman's struggling with rebounds. They're going to try to eliminate every now chance. Now a turnover. Puck bounces back to Rossi. McCauley's able to force it out. And Stevens carries it into the neutral zone. On comes a follow on shot as a collision takes the goal off its post. Semelhek wants a penalty, and so does Siegel. Felt like he was tied up as he tried to get to the front of the net. Yeah, I'd like to see GBN go in the net even harder. It seems almost surprised by this puck. Right there, you got to go with your stick on the ice. You got to bring your hard hat and lunch pail when you're going to the front of the net like that, looking for that puck. If they're looking for that opportunity there, I think there's a real good chance it ends up in the back of the net. Andrew, a pass off the pad is what they call it, right? You shoot to force that rebound, force Caymans to make that initial save. A lot of traffic and pressure coming through the middle there. As I said earlier, that's going to be the MO for the Spartans here going forward. It's like we're going to get the GBS center kicked out of the faceoff. And that's Benji Pajerski. He gets tossed out. Kulikowski still finds a way to win it. Mulvey in, able to clear it out into the GBN zone. 90 seconds to go in this second period. It's been all Titans. McDermott trying to change that script. Rossi trying to force a turnover at the blue line camp. Into the... Latter stage of the second period, Wes Anderson, Andrew Rubin. Here's a shot just missing the net. Dylan Ward and Jenna Rose down on ice level. Max Anderson with your play-by-play -play. from this annual tradition. Here's Pajerski trying to centering pass. Sherwood trying to make it a four-goal game. Puck bouncing around just underneath the circle, trying to find some Way to pry it free, it pops to Vanderplug. Vanderplug misses the net. Pajerski firing in towards Raiderman, and again, finally cleared. So Vanderplug 
alertly able to get that puck along the boards. Cole off its post with 35 seconds to go in the period. We saw that whole chance start on a miss net opportunity from GBN. Shot from the point, whistled wide off the glass, almost immediate breakout. You have to think for GB and the message to all guys getting shots. Make sure your shots get through. Make sure they get on net. There's no reason to bypass an opportunity to make sure you can get the puck on net. It's not worth it to try to score on that first chance. Try to create the second chance. Top line for GBS out here to finish out the period. I have no doubt that's intentional. Here, Jimmy Philbin, you are very happy to see this close at 4-1. He's got his best out there to close the period. Yeah, this top line's been relentless, too, for the Titans. I think they've combined for three or four points tonight. Zach Freemuth with two to boot, and as you expect from the captain, comes right out of the box and right back onto the ice. Face-off battling Miller. Freemuth able to get it somehow, going between multiple defenders. Forces the turnover, Hoffer. Good shot, but Raiderman just trying to keep his team in the game. Henriksen fires it deep. McDermott on the four check here in the last couple of seconds of the second period. Bodies slamming together in the corner. Henriksen pries it free. Rosen thought for a second to pinch, but in the latter stages of the period decides to stay. Two and one, and we are done with two periods here at Centennial Ice Arena. Chicago Blackhawks and Fifth Third Arena have arranged a special visit by Santa on December 17th before he begins his big journey around the world. To see details and register for Fifth Third Arena's annual Santa Skate, visit fifththirdarena.com. After two guys, GBS in control. Absolutely, they go to the break with the 3-0 when you saw them eat the puck there to end the period very happy. Been very opportunistic, has GBS. Held GBN exactly where they want him to be for most of the game. So we're going to send it down to ice level with Jenna Rose as the captain two goal scorer for GBS, Zach Freemuth. Jenna, take it away. We are now joined by Captain Zach Freemuth. I mean, we have to ask you about Marty McCauley. He is the true definition of a two-way defenseman. What makes him so lethal on both ends of the ice? Yeah, he's huge for us. He's one of those uh, offensive defensemen. You see a lot of defensemen nowadays in the NHL, you know, like Kale McCarr getting active in the offensive zone. That's what he does for us. He does, he's huge on the offensive end, on the power play. He's so good at just finding an opening and ripping a shot. You saw it on that goal. That was amazing. You two have made major contributions offensively, but you can't do that without the support of your teammates. How will you continue to hit the gas all together here in the third? Yeah, everyone's playing amazing. My wingers, Blake Hoffer and Nick Ventura, couldn't do it without them. I mean, they're putting me in positions where I can bury the puck, so I'm really grateful for them. We're flying right now. we got to keep it going. All right, well, we'll see. Thank you so much. Great time. Appreciate Thank it. you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you, Jenna and Zach Freemuth. Three goals from his top line between him and Hoffer, and then, of course, his top team, Anna McCauley, gets one as well. It's the stars have come out for GBS. Yeah, as we talked about even in the intro, they, the Titans needed that top line to be huge tonight, and they have, and you can hear it, the, how, just how out of breath he is. He's been out there, it seems like, every other shift, as you'd expect him there, captain, and there's no, there's no quit in that Titans either. You say, put on the gas, keep it going, no quit as they get right here for the third period. So we're going to take a timeout, catch our breath, come back with third period action here in just a couple of minutes right here on the SHL Network and the High School Rivalry Series presented by the Chicago Blackhawks. Thank you. 
Welcome back live here to Centennial Ice Arena. Wes Anderson, Andrew Rubin, Max Anderson, Dylan Ward, Jenna Rose down there on ice level. Well, fellas, four to one after two periods. GBS has taken advantage of GBN mistakes and the rebounds around Caymans, GBN just hasn't been able to clean up. Story of the game so far, honestly, five on five, you could argue GBN has been the better, better team. GBS just really good capitalizing on their opportunities and we've seen Zach Freemuth on full display tonight. Yeah, those two goals really being the difference in this game. I think as it stands, he might have the game winner right now, but expect this GBN offense to come out cooking and firing 29 shots through two periods. Expect that, that pace to be a little bit higher here to get things tied up. Yeah, shots obviously not the problem for GBN. As we mentioned, Caymans has struggled a little bit with rebounds, but he's making that first save. And with GBN not getting very much traffic or many bodies in front, that's all he needs to do tonight to keep GBN held pat. You mentioned the power play goals. GBS taking advantage of two of them so far for GBN. 0 for 3, or excuse me, 0 for 4 now. No, 0 for 3 on the power play thus far. They're going to be looking to try to get an opportunity early. They can get a goal early in this third period. They can get them right back in the game. Just trying to put a little bit of fear into GBS. If you're GBN, that's got to be the memo. Game like this, all the atmosphere, all the fans here. As soon as you can try to get a little bit of doubt in the other team, you can see things start to spiral. We saw that with GBN when they gave up that third goal, instantly took a bad penalty, and then gave up that fourth goal as well to GBS. Yeah, as soon as that momentum uh, changes into the Spartans' favor, this place is going to erupt. And it feels like finally that weight's going to be off their shoulders. We saw with that fir first goal that the Spartans were able to get that finally that a little bit of a deeper breath was taken on that Spartans bench down there. So expect if, they, if they're if they able to get an, an early goal like that for them to come 
even harder here in this third period. Dylan, you've been bouncing between the two benches all game long. What has been the vibe? Obviously, it started out tense, but you, you're around GBS a lot. You're around the SHL a lot. What have you seen from down on the ice? Well, guys, especially I, I've been kind of more on this left-hand side where the north bench is. And after GBS scored their fourth goal, just so much frustration on this bench, especially in the penalty box with Ryan Sandler. And you know that GBN, they were the king of comebacks last season. Andrew knows that well. And they have got a great record here in this league. They are not going to take their pedal off the metal one bit. And don't be surprised at all if we have a tie score at some point. And, and for me, it, it starts with the first two minutes of this third period. And, and I think there's a simple key for me. They've got to start taking advantage of the rebounds around the crease. Eli Kamens, he's stopping pucks, but he's not controlling very well. Wes, you can speak to that well. Yeah, he's doing a good job of tracking that first initial shot. It's just it seems like the puck is, has, has eyes in a, in a weird way of, of these rebounds coming off and the pucks bouncing in front. And, if you're the Spartans, as we want to see in the replays now, going hard to the net is going to be paramount. Those pucks bounces, it could find a, uh, a skate, a knee, uh, your, your butt, anything to, for that puck to, you know, carry him in across the line. Yeah, not only do you want to get one, two, maybe three bodies in front, you got to be ready for that puck when it comes to. Now GBN trailing three goals here heading into the third period. Jenna Rose is standing by with GBN head coach, Evan Polakitas. Jenna. Coach, your team is down 4-1 to one heading into the third, but it is not over until it's over. What do you want to see from your team in the final 17 minutes? Well, you know, we got 17 minutes, right? And, and it's one at a time. You can't score three goals on the first shift. You play the game that's given to you, but certainly this game's not over. If we can pop one early, put a little pressure on them, we'll see what happens. And I'm sure your message is pretty clear in the locker room. Who do you envision amplifying it out on the ice? Uh, we, we, we got, you know, look, we got a lot of leaders and, and the locker room understands we've been in a lot of big games. We haven't played what we wanted to play tonight, but again, we have 17 minutes. Thank you for your time, Coach. Appreciate it. And a simple message, right? A simple message of there's time, but we got to go quick, guys. And he said, we got a net one here in the first couple of minutes. Yeah, and a, a great example of if you can't score all three goals, in one shift, you got to take it shift by shift, rely on your depth here, and it's got to be a team effort. Can't just be one person, can't just be that top line. It's got to be everybody in those white sweaters for GBN to get back in this game. Getting a look at the GBN huddle, some impassioned words from Evan Pulakitis, who looking to get the ship back on track in this rivalry game, whereas GBS looking to make it three in a row. I mean, Andrew, when you were playing in this rivalry, you were part of that long stretch of 16 in a row. That's got to start to weigh on the players' minds as well. Yeah, absolutely. There, there's a lot of pressure coming into this game, but right now the message for GBN's got to be you got nothing to lose. As you mentioned, GBS has won this game the last two years, really turned the tide of this rivalry. Right now you're already down three going into this period. You're playing with house money right now. Go out, see what happens. No fear, no nerves. Let it fly. Yeah, and just have fun at this point, right? You're, you're already down three. I mean... Like you said, let it fly, get, get creative, find, try and find at least one puck past Caymans and if, go from there. You know, you can't score one. You can't score three unless you score one and just step by step, shift by shift to get back in this game. And I'm glad Dylan mentioned it. I had I'd kind of forgotten about last season in a lot of ways, but there were several games where GBN was down two or three goals in the third period. I remember the classic one against Loyola that ended in a shootout. This team, especially last year, had a lot of comeback wins. They've been a little bit more out in front this year, so they haven't needed to. But guys like Sandler, guys like Rossi, guys like Macinter have been there and know how to bring that back. Yeah, as Coach as Coach Polkitas mentioned, they're the leaders of this team. They gotta be able to ignite the rest of the bench. It's gotta be a full team effort. They gotta have that confidence that they can do it. Still can't call him Evan, huh? <laughs> well, what's what's the statute of limitations on that? I think a couple he might more be years, huh? forever. <laughs> <laughs> Underway here in the third period of this annual rivalry series game. Thank you so much for tuning in with us here on the SHL Network. As part of your Thanksgiving Eve tradition from around the world, we've had check-ins from multiple states. We've had a couple of foreign check-ins. I had a Mexico check-in, a Costa Rica check-in. We have viewers all over the world, folks, and we appreciate your support. Of course, the Chicago Blackhawks, their support of the high school rivalry series. Look for GBS to be in this 1-2-2 two, two trap, really. They'll have one forward pressing, two forwards at the blue line, two defensemen then at the red line. Anthony Rafalowski skates through the neutral zone, gets it out wide to Macinter. Macinter rips a shot. This one 
Hot topic in period break, gloved cleanly by Caymans. Yeah, Andrew, you talk about that 1-2-2 two, two trap, and GBS is just ready to let this clock wind down, force GBN to come the full 200 feet, make things difficult through that neutral zone, and create as much chaos as they can before that puck gets to their defensive end. It's worked already when they implemented it in those first two periods. Going to have to be a major adjustment from GBN to be able to break that 1-2-2 two, two trap. Face off. Goes behind the GBS goal. Hoffer trying to dig it out of the half wall. Rafalowski trying to use the big body but can't. Ventura gives it up Freemuth and there it changes a little bit off. Somehow Freemuth's able to get the puck back from Siegel. Finally, Miss Center settles. Now Ryan Rossi. Chips it in on Caymans and easily gloved. Looking for that long shot again for GBN. As mentioned, that's the only way GBN score, which GBS has to feel really good about, kind of a fluky type goal. GBN trying to get that again, but you really can't expect that to work. That's not going to be the way that they're going to be able to crawl back into this game. Yeah, Andrew, we've seen two times now a shot from distance to that glove side of Camus, and he's looked sure-handed here early in this third period, so expect him to be locked in in this final 17. Face off draw to come to the right of Eli Kamens. Shalen trying to go right on net. Now played out in front. Shalen can't get a shot off. That's been the story of the night, guys. Pucks in high danger chances for the Spartans. They just really haven't been able to get shots off. And we get another icing just short of the red line. Maybe we can get a look to see if Rosen had the red line on that play, but going to the front of the net, that's no easy task. When you're going there, you've got to expect to get whacked. You're going to get bumped. It's going to be tough if you're going to want to put home a goal, especially in a game like this. Yeah, and then just another one of those icings that it's uncharacteristic of the Spartans' offense as we're going to get a defensive zone faceoff to the left of Raiderman. Stevens able to fight it back to Mulvey. He's going to chip it towards Raiderman. Calmly sticks it aside. Rosen gives way to Siegel. Of course, Aiden Siegel, a three-year varsity starter for this north side, graduated, but Riston Siegel stepping right into the program. Shalen gets it deep, trying to get the forecheck started. Gets the puck stuck in the corner. Mulvey loses his skates. Now Stevens comes to help. Eventually pops out. Top of the circle, here's a shot. Fought off, and a rebound. Not able to get a piece of it was McDermott. Just to the side of the net and transition Sherwood. Now on to Stevens. Can't quite corral it as he came through the slot. Pops out to Sherwood here in the near circle. He shoots, it hits. Kulikowski on its way to net. Now Stevens below the goal. Siegel, good positioning, steers him off. McCauley settles under 15 to go, and with every passing moment, the task becoming harder for the Spartans. This shot rifled it on Raiderman. He wants to play it, but eventually gets some pressure, so he's got to take a defensive zone draw. We see that trap again, giving fits to GBN. We see GBN trying to rim the puck around the boards up to their forwards. Real tough in a trap like this to be able to do that. It's going to have to be clean passes, looking to gain the red line, get it deep, set up the four check. 14-21 remaining. Now Monaghan and Lyons jostling behind the linesman has a quick word. One cleanly by Rubin. Lyons calmly turns, looks up ice, finds Charlie Walker. His volley in towards the GBS zone, finds the GBS bench. Guys, what is that, our fifth or sixth whistle of the period already in the first three minutes? Been a bit clunky here to start the third for sure. Yeah, and that favors the Titans too. Just slow this game down as much as you can, get fresh bodies out there every 20 to 30 seconds and just make life ever so difficult for the Spartans to get back in this game. Bergamini with a big hit right at the blue line as Walker tastes the worst of it. Centering pass, trying to get Davidson to get a shot off. He can't get anything clean. Just at the last second, Kevin Burns gave him pressure. Shot from the point, knocked down in front. Deflects to the other point, Weller. Drops a blow the goal, Monaghan. Monaghan wrestling. Eventually, Rubin comes away with it. Pierce Davidson trying to keep the play going for the Titans. Now Rubin off the half wall into the neutral zone. Burns takes a hit but gets the puck deep. Another big hit in the corner. GBS trying to lay a physical tone here in the first part of the third period. Burns 
White winds up, doesn't get much on that, so Davidson keeps it in at the far half wall. And forces a turnover. Here's Davidson, a one-man wrecking crew on the four check. Eventually, Rubin takes it away for the Spartans. He shoots, blocker away. And one and done once again, back in the neutral zone. Rubin, a little bit slow to get back to the bench. Forces an offsides against GBN. Guys, we're gonna get a good look at this breakout here by the, the Titans. A little bit of a reverse hit there, Wes. Yeah, Rubin with a great shot, but looks like he loses an edge as he's trying to get that puck on goal. We get a shot here from the, the goalie cam behind Camus. He looks strong and confident out on that blue paint here in the third period. I was going to say, Wes, you're our goalie expert. To me, looks real confident. Blocker save there from Caymans. Now a chance for Stevens. Siegel comes over to support. It's 77, and Black almost had a breakaway. Kulikowski battles for it in the far circle. Eventually clear to the zone, and Mulvey settles at his own blue line. Not a lot of energy in the building right now. GBS, like Wes mentioned, happy to have it just be kind of a mosing affair. GBN's got to find some kind of spark. They're going to find their way back in this game. Semmel Hack opted to play below the goal. Good cycle from the Spartans. Finds Henriksen, top of the circle. Looking for a shot. His shot's blocked. It's going to be a breakaway here for GBS. Here's Kulikowski. Wyatt Sherwood. Kulikowski shoots in a big save from Raiderman preventing his team from getting iced in this game. Guys, remember that. If the Spartans are able to get back in this game, great save by Raiderman. Semmel Hack takes a big hit from Sherwood, excuse me, Freemuth, that knocks open the door. You see the power and speed of Zach Freemuth. And, of course, Jake Semmel Hack, no small body himself. Yeah, we're we'll see if we can get another look at that hit. So we're going to get first look at the save by Raiderman. Coming out challenging, and not only that, but no rebound opportunity clearing that puck. Real great save there. Gonna get a good look at the hit here. Boom, right through the glass. Bounces back towards the ice. Make sure you keep your helmet on <laughs> on that one. Big hit by the GBS captain. Textbook hit, perfect angle taken by 81 in black. He just does everything right on the ice. It's not just offensive, it's all over the ice. That's the captain, Zach Freemuth, side of the net. Sandler trying to find the puck to the front of the net. Gets deflected. Lyons winds up, instead drops it below the goal. Rafalowski trying to use the big body. Macinter's shot just goes over the crossbar. And it leans going to break it out as Hoffer gets the puck deep. Talked about in the second period, Max. GBN can't afford to be missing shots high and wide. Immediate breakout. Freeman centering shot. Here's a shot from Ventura off the deflection, but into the chest of Raiderman. Yeah, guys, sometimes the best defense is offense here. As a quick look at shots here in the third period. GBS leading 7-2. to If you're GBN, you got to get things going here pretty quick. A little over 11 minutes left in this third period. And we see again, it's his first line for GBS, really holding the puck in the GBN offensive zone. The center in Freemuth. It's been the all-stater, the all-everything for GBS. Freemuth has had the better of the matchup and two goals to his name in this game. Now centering pass. Freemuth's shot doesn't miss that shot very often wide of the net. You have had his hat trick. Just how Freemuth keeps getting open like this. GBN's really got to keep, think you have to, they're going to be keying in on him throughout this game. Here's Rafalowski, drag, shoots, fought off, rebound in front. Rafalowski follows and scores. So 10.49 left in the game. Rafalowski collects his own rebound and makes it a two-goal game. Guys, He's guys, we talked about it over and over. Finding those second-chance opportunities in front of the net. Another big rebound by Camus off that left shoulder pad as we get the replay here. And it looks like GBS had a chance to corral that puck, possibly clear it, but they don't. And GBN, a little bit of life with 10 minutes left here in the third period. Yep, looks like that puck went off a skate of a GBS defender, went right to Rafalowski, who was Johnny on the spot, ready for that one. He buries it with no mistake. And really, what was 10, 15 seconds earlier, Freemuth all alone in between the hash marks leads to a GBN goal. What a turn of events right there. So I think everybody in the broadcast booth was willing this game to have some kind of drama here into the third period. Of course, neutral booth, but we wanted something more than a three-goal game. 
So we get a two goal game. And if GBN can find one here in the next five or six minutes, it get real interesting here at Centennial Ice Arena. Now Semelhek bat skates as Sherwood flies up the left wing. Good stick check from 95. That's textbook defensive play from Semelhek. Sherwood had all sorts of speed flying down that far side wall as well. Huge hit from Shalin as he puts Kulikowski into the ice. Miller weaving between defensemen. McCauley eventually comes away with it. See the puck handling there, ability of McCauley. Couple shutdowns, gets himself to some safe space behind the net. Ends up being an icing for GBS, but what could have been disaster was really cut, shut down calmly by McCauley. Guys, and look at the change in the energy from the Spartans, a little bit of life. That second goal gets that bench alive again. You can see assistant coach Ben Stein down there barking at his team, trying to will some life into them. And as you said, Max, a little bit of drama here in the third period. Ever the spark plug behind the bench for GBN is Ben Stein. Trying to will his team forward. Rafalowski below the goal. Trying to force a turnover, instead easily cleared by Blake Hoffer. On the center again, having trouble as he tries to cross up. Rafalowski able to play it forward. Kept in at the point, Siegel. He chips it towards goal, but Freemuth takes it in the chest and knocks it down. And Tura settles it and gets it deep. Oh, a fortunate bounce as that almost bounced right to Freemuth. Now Macinter carries it in the offensive zone. He shoots at Joss, misses the near post there, and he had some room back door. Macinter didn't see the puck. Now Rafalowski centering pass, tried to find Sandler. Again towards net, Rafalowski again trying to find somebody in front. Now a stuff attempt from Sandler. What a save by Caymans. The right pad of Caymans keeps us a two-goal game. You mentioned it, Max. What a save from Caymans and that going post to post. Guys, we're gonna get a replay here. Great patience by Rafowski and a net front pass. And Kamis just great push to his right as we see from the goalie cam. Maybe that might have been put on his net by his own player, yeah, but well, able to push that puck aside and keep things where they stand, Andrew. Looked like it went off the stick of Tutsius in front of the net, but either way, Kamins was still ready for it and got that outstretched pad just enough of it to keep it out of the net. 9.02 to go. And we're going to get a whistle now to fix the net, but Dylan, you've been kind of following the moods down there. GBN, that goal bring them to life. They've really had a uh, pretty good rhythm to it here the last minute. Yeah, and the, it, even right now, the bench just going crazy after that icing. They're waving at their student section to wake up a little bit, and the student section following that order. As we can hear, <laughs> can hear head coach Evan Pulakaitis. A little bit in the background there, screwing out his boards out on the ice right now. Hot mic down there. Certainly. Unlocked a little memory of mine right there. <laughs> I was going to say bad. a little PTSD there, Andrew. Here's Sherwood bringing it forward. Lyons stops and able to clear the zone. Two on two comes Sandler. Sandler trying to create space in the slot. Far circle, turns, shoots, trickles back to Orr. Semelhack wasn't ready for it. Sharp angle, is that between the legs of Caymans? It was, and we get a whistle. We'll see if we can see what we can see from the goal cam on that one. Looked like it was loose on that shot from Semelhack. We'll see that first opportunity there. Really catching Caymans oh, by boy. surprise there, wow. Trying to bank it almost off his backside as he's coming back across the crease to recover, but good on him to have the situational awareness to get down on the butterfly and really squeeze that puck between his legs. Now a shot, right pad save from Caymans. Was wide of the net, but he makes sure of it. Semelhack gloves it, puts it right back into the GBS zone. It's been constant pressure to our left in that GBS zone here over the last five minutes or so. Offer trying to change that. Ventura the trailer, Ventura's shot blocked by Semelhack, who's had a great third period here, trying to get his team in this game. Now losing an edge as he backskated. Mulvey, the deflection in front. Follow up chance, they score! <laughs> Noah Macinter on the follow makes it four to three. Max, we saw the GBS defender go down. GBN took immediate advantage of that. Looking for that backdoor play to Lions. Looked like it bounced off of him. Sandler following up, or excuse me, Macinter following up, cleans up all the loose change that's been there all game long. And just like that, we now have a ball game. 
Guys, the puck has had eyes in this third period, and the second time we've seen that puck almost bobble in front of the, the Titans bench, and the Titans, they can sense it. Two goals in the last three minutes by, by the Spartans, and the Titans are gonna take a timeout, try to settle things down here. Yeah, that's what, Wes, that's exactly what I was gonna say. Jim Philbin takes his one TO right here, still holds the lead, but you know the Spartans are hot right now. So a timeout on the GBS bench. Two goals in two minutes for GBN. And folks, if you were thinking of turning this one off early, I'm assuming you've changed your plans. All of a sudden, the rivalry is going. Something that we expected though, we, what we talk about, get shots to the net and then get in front of the net. Both goals by the Spartans have been just that. They finally found those gre that greasy area in front of Eli Kamens, and they're starting to pay dividends here right now. We've been talking about all game, West. Now the GBN with their sticks on the ice, in front of the net, ready to go for those loose pucks. Got a few bounces. Sometimes that's all it takes, especially in a game like this. Now they got eight minutes left. It's really anybody's ball game. Wouldn't be surprised to see GBS hold things pat here. I think GBN can win in regulation. This is exactly what this game is all about. Guys, and going back to that breakaway save by Raiderman, we talked about it earlier. If that goes in, you talk timely saves, if that goes in, this could be a completely different ball game, but the Spartans down one goal, just over eight minutes left here in the third. Well, the GBN faithful fully back into this one. This is a huge shift for the rest of the direction of this game. And they're skating with some extra speed are the Spartans. GBS now just trying to hold on as they're gonna get an offensive zone draw. GBS just trying to take a deep breath. They've the Spartans the last five minutes have been super relentless in the offensive zone. GBS just trying to take a breath and try to get a breath of fresh air here at the last eight minutes of this game. We also think head coach Jim Philbin, savvy veteran, feels that, felt the energy turning in this game, takes the time out trying to slow things down, regather his team. A draw win, but a bad pass back to the point. Briston Siegel does a great job not turning into an off, off man opportunity. Walker at the blue line, slaps it below the goal. Now McDermott checks in the corner. Eventually puck comes free back to the point in Walker. He's going to fire towards net. That one wide. Siegel comes up, far circle. Keep it going. Pajerski trying to get it out of the zone. It's a struggle right now for the Titans as the pressure from GBN has been relentless here over the last five or six minutes. But they can strike quickly, can the Titans? Here's Pajerski, good block shot on the back skate by Sandler. Now in transition comes Siegel. Siegel goes wide. Now every time up the ice, the GBN faithful come to their feet as this centering pass. Aaron fired down the ice, icing. That GBS defense can feel that pressure too. Uncharacteristic icing there. It looks like they had numbers to break that out, but. Instead, they send it the full 200 and GBM with a great offensive opportunity here. Look for GBS to do that. Expect them after that timeout and the talk from head coach Jim Philbin. They're going to try to play things real safe right now. Not try to give up any more chances. Look to protect the front of the net that GBN's been trying to get to. Macinter and Freemuth. Macinter tries to go right on net. Freemuth doesn't allow that. Hoffer near wall. Could pass to himself off the boards, but support from Sandler slows it down. Coming forward, back. <laughs> Back stick, excuse me, back check from Freemuth. Now McCauley. Up the right wing comes Hoffer. Freemuth up the slot. Hoffer centering pass, falls to Ventura. Macinter loses an edge, so Ventura is able to circle around. McCauley at the point. Now skates forward, winds up, shoots off the chest to Raiderman. A follow save, a third save from Raiderman. Now Macinter trying to catch up to the breakout. Freemuth. Drops it deep, but Michael Raiderman keeping his team in it. Absolutely massive saves. Took it the GBS best, McCauley and Freem with all over that shift. Raffle, GBN able to hold on. Rafalowski as GBS was changing, gets Sandler with a little bit of space, quickly taken away by Stevens. Wyatt Sherwood waits on the far half wall. Coming over quickly, those Miller trying to disrupt. Rink wide, Siegel, center ice, he'll fire it in towards Caymans. Again, gives up the rebound, has almost led to a chance for Miller. And they're just volleying it in on Caymans now, trying to get every rebound they can. Centering pass, again a rebound kicked out right to the stick of Sherwood. Now Sherwood with speed, trying to find some insurance for GBS. His shot, rising wrister, goes over the cage. 
Leads their breakout for Shalen. He's going to throw it into the corner. Vanderplug finds Sherwood, but not out. Here's a shot from the point. Gets deflected, but wide of the goal. Looks like a deflection from Rossi. Siegel tries to shoot towards net. Gets deflected to the far half wall. Sherwood at the end of a long shift. Can't get the puck out. Here's another shot from the point. Deflected wide. Siegel able to keep it at the point once more. Shoots. Deflects wide again. Rossi centering pass. Bouncing around the crease. They score! GBN ties it with 4.52 to go in the third. Listen to this place erupt. It was the initial chance that was blocked. Rossi gets it right to the front of the net, and Shalen right on the doorstep. You see he's being harassed. He buries that puck Cooper and Shailen. able to tie it up. Absolutely, Cooper Shalen on the doorstep gets his third SHL goal of the season. Folks, it's four to four. Guys, take a deep breath. Looks like Eli Kamens was never ever able to ever track that puck as it came in on net front. and. Once again, the Spartans so relentless in front of that Titans net. Second chance opportunity, puts the puck in, and we've got a tie game here, guys. Wes, we've been talking about as soon as GBN can get to the front of the net, find those loose pucks, they're going to have all sorts of chances, and it's only taken them five minutes to put three goals home. Unbelievable turn of events here at Centennial Ice Arena. The drama. And now, what's GBS's response? Raiderman deflects it into the corner. And there's just a different tempo to GBN than we saw in the first two periods. They're just skating with a little bit more edge here than they were for the first 34 minutes. Guys, a little bit of a fight too by GBS. We saw Raiderman with a great uh, save on that breakaway. And then again, a two chances right before that fourth GBN goal. Raiderman with a little bit of a shaky rebound, but able to recover well with that right pad, save, keep the puck out, and give his team a chance. Mazarski and Pajerski battle for it. Rubens able to win it and fires it around the boards. Had a huge hit as Monaghan put Circus in the ice. Now countering, though, is McDermott. McDermott can't weave between a third defender. McCauley up from his defensive spot on the rush. Look at Samuel Hack, a great stick check to take the puck away from McCauley. His clearance goes all the way down heist, but Jake Samuel Hack, I don't think is on the score sheet yet, guys. But he's paid a heck of a game on the back line for GBM. If we can GBM. get another look at that too, Max, it looked like McCauley had Monaghan wide open on the back door, but that stick check from Samuel Hack did not allow McCauley to get that puck to his player open. Andrew, great pickup, and that small plays like that that lead to wins, a simple stick check, prevents that puck from going cross crease and potentially ending up in the back of the net on the pose. You get an icing, you get some fresh bodies, and no harm, no foul, keep the score tied here. Face off one cleanly by Macinter. That's the way this game has changed. It was all Freemuth winning those draws, getting goals. All of a sudden, it's GBN winning those draws and getting the better of play. And the captain, Freemuth, the four-year varsity starter, will his team to riding the ship here. He's in the corner, leaves it for Hoffer. Hoffer has his pass deflected. Siegel's just going to chip it out into the neutral zone, trying to find Macinter. McCauley, bad clearance. Sandler's able to force the turnover. Now Sandler below the goal. He's looking for a wraparound, looking for something in front. Instead, he'll go back to the point. Almost disaster there as Charlie Walker couldn't handle it. It's going to be a two-on-one offsides as Hoffer's too early. Almost a disaster as Charlie Walker fumbled the puck at the point but gets away with it off the offsides. Exactly. What you can have right now is an easy breakdown like that. Turnover in your own zone, turnover at the blue line, giving the other team an easy opportunity. That's exactly what you can't have right now for both of these teams in this situation. Yeah, Spartans taking a deep breath after that one. Potential two-on-one coming back the other way, but Titans enter the zone a little bit too early, and we're going to get offside and face off outside of the zone. You still have the first line out there for both teams. Vanderplug back in his own zone to collect. Ventura near half wall. Now rink wide Hoffer, another good stick check from Riston Siegel. 
Sandler battling his way up the far boards, wins it. He shoots. That's off the side of the net. The entire GBN faithful got to their feet thinking that slap of the net was a goal. Now Rosen caught a little bit behind. Ventura shoots. Left pad save. Ventura couldn't get much on it. That just kept in at the blue line. GBN running all over their zone right now. And a little bit discombobulated. Hoffer and Siegel come together right in front of the goal, but no call. Now Siegel smartly just makes sure that puck gets out of his zone to Andrew's point, a reset, but McCauley between a couple of defensemen and the last line of defense is Charlie Rosen clearing the danger. I think GBN's completely willing to take that ice in there. Really mass chaos, even when they cleared it, McCauley right back on the rush right there as we get another look at that pad save from Raiderman. Yeah, Great yeah. look. See, find him high in the slot. Wes, talk to me about Raiderman. Yeah, not to cut you off there. Sorry, buddy. But Raiderman on top of his crease. Great left pad save. But going back to the GBN ice and that puck, Rafalski bent over, going to the bench. Much needed reinforcements for GBN, so they'll take that all day. Burns near half wall is going to get a quick whistle. Didn't quite see what for. Is it a face-off violation? Got to love that with two minutes left in the third period and we're calling out face-off violations. Shaylin and Stevens. Shaylin wins it cleanly. Lions wraps around the boards. Puck stuck on Rossi's skate. That's a break there for GBS, able to keep it in for a minute. But then smartly just chipped out by Semelhack. Stevens and Semelhack. Semelhack a big hit on Stevens. Sherwood, that looked like offsides, no call. Break for GBS. Semelhack chips it ahead, finds Miller. Now Miller creates some space, skates to his right, tries to shoot left, but it was blocked. That hits the linesman, that's a break for GBS as that puck wasn't able to get deep for GBN. Almost too many men on the ice because of it. Siegel far half wall, Rafalowski chipped in, looking for a deflection from Siegel. He has been active from his defensive spot tonight, especially here in the third period. 75 seconds left in the third. Rafalowski back to Semelhack. His shot kicked aside by Caymans. This saucer pass, that's off the glove. That's going to set up Hoffer. He comes out. What a play by Raiderman. Alertly sticks it away. Gutsy play there from Raiderman. Deep breath by Raiderman, but aggressive and nulls the potential breakaway opportunity by the Spartans. It would have just been an icing if the GBN defenseman let the puck go. Ventura turns, fires it towards net. Siegel has the puck pop off his stick. Freemuth below the goal. Back to the point. Vanderplug has it roll off his stick and then fires it back in. It would have been offsides if touched. GBN can reset here for the final 30. Anthony Rafalowski tries to carry it forward. Stevens takes it away. Now Sherwood and Siegel battle. Sherwood brings it forward, shoots. Raiderman, calm, cool, and collected. Squeezes the legs, takes a draw. Real shocking to see a turnover at the far blue line for GBN there. Gives going to give GBS the chance. We see Raiderman very gut gutsy coming out of his net there. We're going to have a timeout called by Evan Polakidis. I, I like this timeout from Evan Polakidis. He recognizes the importance of this upcoming faceoff with 22.4 to go in the game. Just need a deep breath for that top line, right? They've been out there what it seems like almost every other shift here in the third period. You can see Raiderman's on the bench taking a deep breath, getting some water. He's been stellar here in this third period. So we've got just over 22 seconds left in this third, guys. Also important, GBS has had chances off of offensive zone faceoffs all game long. You got <clears throat> Excuse me, guys. You got to think this is especially stressful for the goaltenders right now. At this moment, Glenbrook North leading shots 44 to 39. And even though both goalies allowed four, both goalies have been a huge reason. Reason it's not an even higher scoring game. Yeah, especially Raiderman, right? Wes, you highlighted the save early in the third. He had another one just about four or five minutes ago on a two-on-one. Michael Raiderman, shaky maybe on that second goal that Freeman snuck under his pad. Other than that, he's been spectacular, especially since GBS scored that fourth goal. Max, he's been the definition of clutch here in the third period. You highlight that breakaway save, and he's just done that this previous save. Cool, calm, and collected on top of that blue paint, really giving that confidence to the Spartans here in this third. And if I would have told you that 
This game could be tied in the third period when Jimin was down three, and they didn't get any special teams goals out of it. It was five-on-five five action. Andrew, you were the one that called out. You felt like GBN was having the better of five-on-five five play. We've seen that in the third period. Absolutely. And although since GBN scored that fourth goal, GBS really picked up the play. Final 20 to go here in the third period. Lions spins it around the boards, takes it off the referee, a break for GBS. Can they take advantage? Gets it back to the point, McCauley. Sends it below the goal looking for Hoffer. Lions finds Rossi fire half wall. He's happy to clear it, but probably didn't want an icing there with 4.3 left to go in the third period. Especially with nobody around him, really no pressure on Rossi there at all. Puts yeah. all the way to this game on this one faceoff. Yeah, Andrew, he had some time to skate up ice and potentially just flip that out and ice the clock and take this to OT. Just deep breath from the Spartan faithful. Just face off when get you to that uh, last frame here with four seconds left. Can GBS find a miracle moment in the waning seconds? Miss Center, Freemuth the draw. Miss Center ties him up, can't get it out. Here's a shot from the point. Traffic in front, trying to stuff it home. But Freemuth couldn't get a shot off, and we will head to overtime. Real interesting there from GBN. We saw, looked like they were first there initially off the faceoff. They choose to whack it forward. Goes right to the GBS defender instead of just pulling it to the corner, looking to eat the rest of the time. Yeah, you can see head coach. Uh, Evan Pulakaitis is red down there. You win that face off, take it to the corner and just eat it. The last thing you want to do is give GBS an opportunity with, with uh, guys in front of Raiderman, a potential tip opportunity with five seconds left. Max, I believe the last game to go to overtime in this series was the 2019. Last game before COVID, I believe Braden Roy scored the overtime winner in that game. And I'm the one that has the memory. That's good memory. Of course, you were playing in I that game. Okay, you were playing game. in that game. Yeah. That's why you yeah. remember it, sure. Quick refresher, if you're new to SHL hockey, it's three on three for five minutes. It basically follows NHL overtime. The only difference is if no one scores in those first five minutes, it will be a one-round shootout, meaning we won't have the minimum three or, or two, I should say, in NHL play. It's a sudden death shootout, which I know Dylan loves that term. Dylan, what do you got? Yeah, I love that term, Max. I also love that we switch sides, as you mentioned, so the teams are shooting right in front of their huge student sections. Also, GBS, this is the first time they've gone to OT this season, in or out of the SHL. GBN twice in the SHL so far, victorious twice, once in OT and once in the shootout. Also, Dylan, this switches to the period of the long change in overtime. Like the second period, real tough to get off the ice. Both teams getting the last instruction from the officials. Guys, moments like these, these are when your star players gotta be star players. You have to assume Zach Freeman's gonna be starting this overtime. Three on three gives him all the space in the world. It's going to be real tough to stop him if you're GBN. Real important to get opening possession off I, the face. I call this three on three NASCAR on ice. <laughs> there is flying up and down the ice. You've got to be smart with your exits. You've got to be smart at the blue line. That's something you'll notice when the biggest changes you'll see is when defensemen play with the puck around the blue line, they're much more careful. They're not as willing to risk it at the blue line. They'll just take it back into the neutral zone. Yeah, guys, they're not afraid, like you said, not afraid to take it back in the neutral zone. If they don't have anything they like, they'll come back, set it up, regroup. And especially with that long change where the team gets hemmed in its own defensive end, it feels like it's even longer because they've got to go that extra time and extra space to get to their bench. So something to keep in mind, those short shifts, particularly in OT, are very paramount here. Both teams have also already taken their timeout, and we see GBS go, starting with McCauley, Freemuth, and Sherwood going for that gut shot right off the bat. Fellas, would we have it any other way? Three on three overtime in this annual Thanksgiving tradition. GBN, GBS, we're into the fourth period. Puck gets deep into GBN zone to start. Now Ryan Sandler, captain for GBN. Calm tosses but misses Lions on the far side. McCauley's able to take over here. It's Freemuth. Rink wide to Sherwood. Sandler stalks him there at the top of the circle. Lions comes over to support. Back to the point, McCauley circles. Fakes to Freemuth, gets them clearance, cross ice pass. What a sprawling block by Lions. Looking for something centering is McCauley. So good with the puck is 2-4 in black. Gets it over to Freemuth at the near point. Right back to McCauley. Now Sherwood. Sherwood turns, fires right into the chest of Raiderman. Guys, the play away from the puck is going to be paramount. We see Sandler. Getting crossed up there on that last opportunity, trying to find that open man up at the point with that extra space. You gotta make sure you're aware of those open players away from the puck. A puck. 
That's exactly what you're looking for in three-on-three -three overtime. You saw running that three-man cycle. You want to get guys moving all over the place. Try to create some confusion. Use that open ice to your advantage. Alma Center and Stevens. It's a draw, but Stevens still battling for it. Eventually, it's Macinter that's able to create the space and take control. Now settling behind his own goal. Macinter up the right wing, gets pressure from Stevens, skates right by him. Here comes Macinter, skates into the slot, turns, has a puck roll off his puck. Almost a disaster for GBN as Stevens would have had a breakaway. Now Rafalowski, pirouettes, looking to get to Siegel across ice. Instead, Mulvey there to collect. And Mulvey can't ring it around the board, so Macinter's going to be able to get the puck back. Macinter curls into the slot, turns, shoots, deflects. Now Siegel, bottom of the circle, thinking about it. Trying to evaluate his options, turn to get deflection and set. What a save by Caymans to keep GBS alive. Ice in the veins of Eli Caymans. And now we're going to get a fall to the ice, but it's going to take more than that in overtime to get a whistle. GBN saying go, go, go. Here's Macinter trying to create space. Backhanded shot was looking for Siegel back door, I think. Siegel collects, top of the circle, turns, skates into the slot. Leads to Rafalowski. Rafalowski shoots, gets the back door from Siegel. He's not able to get a stick on it. A lot of tired bodies on the ice right now. The center fires it around. Rafalowski collects below the goal. Long shift for everybody out on the ice right now as it rolls off the stick of Siegel. How bad do you want it? How hard are you willing to skate no T to find the all-important bragging right win in this matchup? The center carries in, shoots just wide as Rafalowski is absolutely gassed, just falls into the bench as Rossi gets out there for the Spartans. Now Siegel, same way, just collapses over the bench. Here's Rossi, he shoots off the crossbar! Now that's gonna lead a bit of a breakout here for GBS, and just deciding to dump it and get off the ice as Nick Ventura inches away from a game winner Top for unit GBN. back out for GBS. Now Samuel Hack. Fighting off McCauley. Freemuth's going to go give him some pressure. Semelhack still fighting off Freemuth. See the strength and confidence from 95 and Cream and Green. Here's a shot. That one high over the crossbar. Rossi below the goal. Tries a centering pass. Deflected to the stick of Sherwood. Sherwood and Freemuth. Rossi coming back. Freemuth. Up the left wing, Rossi with him every step, drops to McCauley. McCauley, top of the circle, makes a move around one man, shoots! He goes off the shoulder of Raiderman. Almost thought that snuck by him, and I can see the trepidation on Wes Anderson's face. Guys, we're going to get a good look at that last opportunity. I mean, three inches away from a winner. By the, by the Spartans, and... Just missing that top left corner are the Spartans. Some great action here in OT. Both teams' top units back out there. Sandler, Freemuth, the draw to the right of Raiderman. Comes to the stick of Samuel Hack. Hoffer sandwiches him off the puck. Now McCauley, 1.15 to go. If we don't get a goal in the next 75 seconds, we'll go to a shootout. Here's Freemuth. Freemuth skates, looking for, he goes backhand. His shot fought off by Raiderman. Samuel Heck now going to give a check to Freemuth. Final minute of OT. Looked like Dennis Savard on that spinorama. Chipped forward. That goes over the stick of Sandler, and that's a huge break for GBS. Andrew. Yes. Last year, Zach Freemuth scored the game's opening goal in that exact fashion. He was trying to do it back-to-back -back years. Max, you mentioned break for GBS, but also many teams will teach their goalies on icing, play the puck. It's more worth it to get possession than an offensive zone faceoff. That's a 50-50. Yeah, Andrew, that's a, that's a great call because those are some tired legs for GBN as well. You're able to hem in that defensive zone and possibly create a great offensive opportunity. Stevens and Macinter. Macinter's able to win it, and Siegel gets it across the Semelhack. Now Noah Macinter. Was the league leader in goals until a couple of days ago. Can he find an OT winner? Has the puck taken off his stick by Sherwood. Gets it right back. Here's Macinter circling. Final 30. Macinter into the slot. Macinter, he shoots. Big save, Caymans. Love save, and 
as much as we've been on Eli Kamins, especially through two periods with some of the rebounds, he's come up with three or four huge saves over the last five of OT and regulation. Guys, he's been the star of this OT. Just before this, that great right pad save off the tip, and then again, a little deep in the crease, but able to locate that perfectly well and get a whistle with no rebound. You guys are taking the words right out of my mouth. When it's mattered most, my oh my, as Eli came and stepped up huge for this Glenbrook South team. The center, Freemuth, the center wins again. Gets it quickly over to Sandler. Sandler shot easily into the chest of Caymans with 20 to go. Sandler normally a, pre a little bit more patient than that. I think he jumped the gun just a tad. Captain's trying to get that. Fifth goal for his team, give them the win. He'd like to see him just be a little bit more patient, maybe feed that to the point for a better shot. This matchup between 66 and 81 all night long has been a war between these two. The center has come up big here in the third period in overtime, wins another draw. McCauley now, the center skating. Can McCauley get the edge? He's going to turn around. He's got a man wide open in the slot. The shot, huge save, Raiderman! Max, I'm having flashbacks look just like the save of Sammy Billis in that 2019 matchup. We get another look. My goodness, Michael Raiderman has outdone himself with the glove going post to post with two seconds left. What a save. Guys, I think Raiderman heard us giving props to Caymans and had to get himself in this game in OT. Freeman Macinter with two seconds to go. The clock will expire and we are headed to a shootout at Centennial Ice Arena in the Blackhawks rivalry series game. I'll tell you what, Max, I don't know if this game has ever in its history gone to a shootout. I know lots of high school hockey games before would end in ties. SHL has really only been the new thing that started the shootouts. I believe this will be the first one in this rivalry series, or this rivalry game night before Thanksgiving that's going to result in a shootout. Wes, take us to the mindset of both these goaltenders right now. Uh, the mindset, make the forward, make the first move. you got to be out on top of that crease, be patient. There's a lot of skill on both sides, right? There's going to be a lot of dangles, a lot of stick handling. Make the sh shooter, make the first move, and then recover back to the post, depending on what side they go. Ruben, you were a skater, and you've been in shootouts. What's your mentality here? you got to have your go-to moves. you also got to know the ice is not in great conditions right now. Already playing a period and overtime. Keep things simple. You got your go-to moves. You got to try to keep your emotions in check. Just do everything that you've done your entire life, really. Also, something you got to reiterate, it is a sudden death shootout. One team scores, next team misses, game over. What, Wes, if you're a goaltender, do you prefer you, you save first or save second? Save second. Uh, you, you know you know what's at stake. You know either you're going to be the hero or if you let the puck in, you're, you're going to be the villain. So, Ruben, how about you? I prefer to go first, set the tone. GBS being the home team has the opportunity to select whether they want to go first or second. And it looks like GBS chooses to go first. And of course, it's Zach Freeman. Who else would it be for GBS? He beat Raiderman on a breakaway earlier in this game, forehand, backhand. Zach Freeman gets the whistle. Steven Ban announces Freeman. Freeman skates wide right, comes up, shoots. Big save, Raiderman! And now with a chance to win the game, Ryan Sandler had multiple shootout winners last season. Can he get the one in the biggest game? I believe he has one this year as well against Fenwick in GBN's lone shootout win. And guys, Freeman with that, that earlier breakaway beat Raiderman to that blocker side. Raiderman, great patience, stays home. Beat, Raiderman beats him to the glove side and gives his team a chance to win here. Game on the stick of Ryan Sandler now. Captain for GBN approaches the puck. Can he win it for the Spartans? Sandler skates wide, comes up the slot. He shoots, he scores! Ryan Sandler finishes the comeback. GBN wins! Guys, what a game, and Raiderman, save after save after save in that third period, kept his team in the game, gave him a chance to tie things up, and then who else but the captain picks his spot, goes glove side low, and gives GBM their first win 
in three years. I'm at a loss for words right now. This is exactly what high school hockey is all about. Just you and we, and I was looking at you while the, the Spartans came down to celebrate assistant coach Ben Stein. We both know how passionate he is about this team. Elated, happy. I think he gave, gave a hug to, or he's about to give a hug to 86 in white. It goes straight to the student section. <laughs> if there's anybody that knows how to get a room alive, get them excited, it is assistant coach for GBN, Ben Stein. Everything we'd hoped and dreamed this game could be or would be, it became. And guys, it was a depressing feeling. We're surrounded by the GBN faithful. We've got the parents to our left, the students to our right. Before that third period, it was bleak. I'm over here and fans ready to leave by the 10 minute mark of the third, or third period if things don't turn around. But boy, did they stick with it. They kept peppering Caymans with shots. They got the couple of goals in two minutes they needed. And then you got your captain finishing it for GBN. It's return to glory for GBN. As mentioned, big win streak before. Lost the last two, and what other than a comeback for the ages to get back on track for Glenbrook North. And it's not going to be a pretty one for Michael Raiderman, Wes, but boy, did he step up when his team went down 4-1 to one midway through the second. He was lights out for the last half of the game. Max, timely saves, win you games, and time and a time again, Raiderman in that third period made three or four huge saves to keep his team in this game team celebrating in front of their students. Going to get a nice team sh team photo. Big thanks to Gerard Voris down there on the mobile cam down on the ice. Bringing you all the sights and sounds. Glenbrook North takes back the crown, the prestige of Bragging winning nice. this game. Guys, it is three points. GBS gets one out of it. Let's acknowledge that. But you know this game means so much more than that. Absolutely. It's bragging rights for the whole year. And we're going to send it down to ice level where Jenna Rose is standing by with Ben Stein, assistant coach. This has to be one of the greatest comebacks in the history of this rivalry. How do you describe the atmosphere, not only amongst your players, but in this entire building? These kids are dogs, all right? We went down the locker room, down 4-1. Coach Evans said, I don't know where he is. That's why I'm doing this. But Coach Evans said, get one by 10. We'll get the next one. We'll get the next one. We got the best goalie in the state, the best D in the state, the most clutch forwards in the state. Coach Evan always has a game plan, executed the game plan. All I got to say, North, North is back on top, baby. North is back on top. Let's go. Well, I was going to say your team definitely displayed resiliency. What exactly was it out on the ice that allowed them to have an amazing comeback? You never give up at North. We know we're a hell of a good hockey team. And until that final buzzer, I don't care if we're down five goals or ten. The coaches believe in them, and I said, you guys got to believe in yourselves. That's all we have. All we have is each other. This is absolutely electric stuff. I honestly could cry right now. North is back on top. I'm so proud of these kids. They listened to Coach Evans' game plan. Coach Paul did a great job. Schmitty locked in. Raiderman, after you know a couple dicey goals, he's the best goalie in the state. I'm so freaking hyped up. North's back on top, baby. Well, Coach, thank you so much for your time. We thank really you appreciate so much. It. Congratulations. Sending it back to you guys. I think Ben Stein doing a nice job of encapsulating how Spartan Nation feels at this moment. Ryan Sandler steps up, gets the shootout goal. I mean, is he just the shootout man or what? Two last year, I think it might actually be three last year. One already this year gets another ice in his veins. Boy, does he have moves down there. And speaking to Ryan Sandler, we're gonna send it down where Jenna Rose is with the star of the game, Ryan Sandler. Well, listen, congratulations. This is an amazing atmosphere, and this is amazing energy. For to have a comeback like this, what does that say about the resiliency of your team? Uh, it says everything. I mean, in the locker room, there was no give up. There was no quit. Um, we all had a look in our eye that we, we, weren't, we weren't going away. We weren't laying down. We weren't going to give up. And, um, you know, we're, we're satisfied with the outcome. It's an emotional win, and one that I'll never forget for the rest of my life. And I want to talk about your goalie, Ryderman, his performance during the final little bit over a minute, and then, of course, going into the three-on-three. -three. How do you describe his performance tonight? I, unbelievable. Without him, that game is – we lost, right? Um, yeah, you know, he was this, he was frustrated with how he played in the first two periods, but we told him, look, it's not you, it's us. We got you this period. So he we went out, and we, we committed to team defense and turned into offense, so – and when it comes to high school hockey, it isn't often that you get into the shootout. What was your mentality heading into that moment? 
I was crapping my pants, to be honest. I mean, I, I was I was losing it. I've never sweat my, like half of this sweat is just from that is just from anxiety, not 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 not, not the not the hockey game, but you know. <laughs> well, you and your team played it cool. Thank you so much for talking with us and congratulations. Thank everybody. you so much. He's got to see for a reason. Just a happy bunch of humans down there on the ice, Jenna Rose encapsulating it so well. Guys, final thoughts. This is exactly what high school hockey, this rivalry is all about. Sold out building, comeback for the ages. Perfect for viewing, perfect for playing. Absolutely great night. A immediate instant classic. I mean, you're down three goals for the Spartan side and you come back with three in the third to tie it and then the dagger and, and the shootout and just an unbelievable hockey game from top to bottom. Well, we are so glad that you could join us for that. If you stuck with us through that third period when it looked bleak for GBN all the way into a shootout, we thank you so much. All our support on the SHL network, of course, all our support from the Blackhawks as well. Can't thank them enough. Of course, our team, Andrea Hahn, Greg Tam, Andy Pape from the Blackhawks, and the rest of their amazing promotional team with all the giveaways out front, all the hard work, all the blood, sweat, and tears the Blackhawks put into this rivalry. We thank them for that. Of course, our cameramen. We had three of them tonight, guys. That's just how much people love this rivalry. We had Matt Freeman right here with us all the time. We've got Gerard Voris, who had the cam down on the ice. And, of course, GBN's favorite, Joel Schneider, on the main cam to our right as well. We thank them for their great work. Can't forget about David Ventura, of course, former GBS player. I know he's a little bit sad over there. I apologize. <laughs> but he stepped in as technical assistant, helping us run all the scoreboard items for uh, the, here on the stream. Jimmy the Wiz Olsen, guys, you saw all of the camera angles, all of the split shots, all of the replays, all of the technical work wouldn't get done without this amazing young man right here, my partner in crime, Jimmy the Wiz Olsen. Can't thank him enough. Of course, Jenna Rose, Dylan Warren, we're down on ringside work. Dylan with the great nuggets and tidbits. Nobody knows the SHL more than Dylan. No one puts more energy and effort into the media of the SHL than Dylan Ward. Can't thank him enough for his great work on the broadcast. Of course, Wes Anderson, Andrew Rubin, I'm Max Anderson. Thanks for tuning in. Be right back here Sunday afternoon for the championship of the Loyola Thanksgiving Tournament. But until then, we bid you a good day. Have a great Thanksgiving. Thanks for tuning in.